order at 7.03 p.m. If you would please rise. Christine Pulliam, would you please lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is Stephen LeBranch. I'm the chairman. Um, I would ask the members to please introduce themselves, starting with Ginny Bridal uh, Russell. Ginny Bridal Russell, school board representative. Tony Kravitz. Ryan Lapham. Regina Barnes, selectman representative. Steve Henderson. Mike Wolf. Uh, Jones. David Morrow. And we also have with us Barbara Kravitz, our recorder. Okay, now, tonight, <clears throat> first thing, the next thing on our agenda is we we're going to review the available money warrant articles that were given to us by the town manager. And I, I will read the, the warrant article. Um, Tim, did you want to say something? Yes, I did. How'd you know that? Oh, go ahead, please. I have a question whether any or all of these are uh, draft warrant articles. I know at last night's spectrum selectmen's meeting, they were, they were indicated as all being in draft form. Have they been finalized between then and now? Okay. Good question. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Um, I just look quickly, and I pay this town manager, these are all the ones that we have officially approved That's for the correct. selectmen meeting? Yeah. Yes. So all of these are final form? Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was my understanding, Tim, that um, two, two meetings ago, you might remember, the selectmen went through all of these yeah and but what happened after that is that at that point they were in draft form they had to still pass through legal and then they arrived on our our pallet so um, <coughs> so I'll start with the first one the Beach Street lighting shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of installing new decorative light street lighting in Hampton Beach on C, D, and F streets and on Ashworth Avenue, including all engineering, design, procurement, shipping, delivery, and installation costs, together with all related pertinences, pertinences and activities necessary or desirable to complete the purposes of this article. With the sum of $100,000 to come from the unassigned general fund balance, a fund containing unexpected unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2017, and no additional amount to be raised from taxation in this year. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32,7,6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March 31st, 2020, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, no tax impact. No, decorative lighting was installed in 2009 on A and B streets as well as part of Ashworth Avenue in accordance with plans in the possession of the town. The underground conduit already is in place on all of the Ashworth Avenue and all of the leaded streets with only wiring and decorative street lighting needing to be installed. A new lighting, the new lighting that was installed has greatly improved visibility and safety on the streets where lighting was completed. The old commercial street lighting was disconnected and removed, and utility bill billing for the commercial street lighting has been terminated for those streets. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5 to 0. Do I have a motion from anyone here? I'll make a motion that the Budget Committee approves this warrant article. Okay, Regina has made a motion. Anybody want to second that so that we can have discussion? I'll second it. Okay, Steve Henderson has seconded. Okay, discussion, please. I, I do want to mention one thing. The, um, the conduits that this talks about were put into place back when they, the town did the, um, the sewer yeah. upgrades at the beach. The village district actually had a bond at the time for it was four hundred and something thousand dollars to put the conduits under the sidewalks and at the time um, they had a uh, the village district had something going on with the town that a, a, a very small percentage was put into a, a capital fund every year from the um, 
money raised from the parking lot and that money accumulated and that was to um, do s several of these types of projects one being the street lights and then perhaps other things later on at some point that was changed and the <coughs> the amount was then given to the rec department but just a little bit of history to let you know <coughs> the village district had planned on this long long time ago to put these lights in and i'm really happy to see that the town is now they did <coughs> Uh, a, a couple of the streets a few years ago with some money that was in an account and they went <coughs> as far as they could and now they're going to do a little bit more and I think this is wonderful because little by little we chip away at these things and before you know it it's done so having said that um, any anybody would like oh Sonny yes yeah you know we walked in we got you handed us four or five packets you know we um, I haven't had a chance to even look at them I, this is the you know, first time I've read it. That's why, uh, you know, yeah, well, right. you stumbling read a little it. bit. Yeah, who are we going to win? Well, if you, I don't know if you watched the selectmen's meeting, but these were discussed openly. No, I didn't, I didn't watch. Okay, it was two weeks ago time. on a Monday that they actually went through each of these yeah, articles, no, and that's the only reason I'm even yeah. I'm aware of them. No, okay? I realize that you just got them now. They, I had mentioned before that they were draft when the, when the selectmen went over them, they had to then go to the legal department to be finalized, and that's what we now have in our hands, the ones that were uh, available. These aren't all of them, by the way. These are just the ones that are available. A lot of these in the stack, I think that you'll see, once we start going through them, are ones that we see every year, the conservation land acquisition, um, the, let me see, hazardous waste, collection, human service agencies, uh, the, there, there are some of them here, you're going to notice they're the same ones we do have. Yeah, no, I understand, okay. but I mean, you know, without having an opportunity to look at the stuff and see if there's questions, well, you know, how can you really yes, vote? Sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 think, I think the town would be well served if the chairman were to entertain a concept that if any of these warrant articles that come before us tonight are controversial among the members that we can table it to a subsequent meeting. But I find that probably in my own opinion several of these warrant articles we could deal with tonight. Mm -hmm. If there are questions that need to be addressed that are important to how you vote, then we should raise those in the discussion so that we could get feedback in a subsequent meeting and vote on it at that time. That way we could handle this most expeditiously. All right. I think that I appreciate your suggestion, and I don't have any problem with that. And as I said, some of these we should be able to buzz through. Some of them are a little bit complicated. I'll agree with that. And so the only question I have on this particular warrant article is we've mm -hmm. lived without the dec so-called decorative lights on these streets uh, for what, eight years since we first started installing them. And, and I don't know why this year is a magical year to do it, as opposed to last year or next year. Personally, I find that when we stop doing it, the decorative lights on A and B Street were not considered all that decorative to begin with, and not worth the exercise. Uh, at least that's what I've heard uh, when I talk to people about those lights. And so I'm kind of surprised to see this uh, here. And uh, even though it's coming from the unassigned and it says general fund balance, I believe it should say unassigned fund balance, right? Um, even with the correction of that, I, I find that, you know, we shouldn't be just uh, you know, pulling money out of the unassigned fund balance for things that we can live without, given our financial stress that we have with so many other things going on in this town. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Hold on, Sonny. Hold on. Steve. Yeah, my recollection was when this was originally done, the sidewalks and the sewer project, that that's why they do the conduit underground. They were supposed to have done the lighting at that point, but due to some unforeseen circumstances that came upon the construction and some issues that they ran into uh, doing the project, they had to cut back some funds, and that's why the lighting didn't take place. But it was supposed to have originally been done. That's why the conduit and everything was all set to do it. Right. On a safety issue, I mean, it does light up those side streets and probably helps, uh, you know, light them up. Sometimes I, I go through there and I think they're a little bit tight and they could have probably put one every other one and the way they are. But, hey, I'm not an engineer in that, that process. But, you know, having more lights down there lighting up those side streets on the beach isn't a bad thing for safety reasons. 
like I said, the conduit is underground. It was supposed to be done in the original plan, and for one reason or another, overruns took place, and that's why it didn't take place. If I could get you the yield. Um, I don't have a problem with lighting the streets. I think lighting the streets in general is a great idea. They're basically needed. Uh, but do they need to be decorative, first of all? And when we, we're talking about C and D and F streets, I mean, there are several other streets on the beach that need lighting. And if, if we don't spend money on decorative lights, which are considerably more expensive, I understand, we could actually add more streets to get lit with more traditional lights, maybe go to um, even less, even more energy efficient lights, perhaps. But uh, the decorative lights that are there in A and B Street uh, are not considered by many, including myself, to be worth the money, the extra money, the, the so called decorative aspect that brings. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think the one issue that comes up, though, is you've already done Highland Ave, you've already done some of the side streets, so now what do you do? Do you change these things over and put new ones in and start from scratch? I mean, the first thing is great. Do what the state did. I mean, you really go to LEDs as a way to go if you really want to save energy, et cetera, you know, more light and right. less energy, and that probably would be the way to go. Maybe they can put LED bulbs in these. I'm not sure, but that's probably the way to go. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. Uh, Mr. Welch. Are they going to put LED lights into these globes? The new lights that will be put up will be LEDs, and the old lights as they burn out will be changed to LEDs. Thank you very much. See, that's what we need to know. That's a key to this whole thing. This, and all of, the, all of the streets, Tim, have street lights. They don't have a lot of light because these are going to, especially with those LED lights, it's going to really light that up. And, I, and the thing is that I might be wrong, but they don't, do they run them year round? Yes, they do. Okay. Well, you know, it's there's no. I think that having lights on at night is probably a very good thing. One hundred percent agree. I walk those streets. And, I know. And Tim, they, they aren't. They, they're going to be decorative to match the others, but they're going to be LEDs, which to me is that we're bringing it up to the you know 2017, and that's a great thing, I think. Uh, David, please. What is decorative lighting? I've been in Hampton for 37 years. I don't think I've been down A Street and B Street at nighttime, but I go through the center of town at Christmas and I see all the decorative ornaments and things of that nature. Okay, Those Christmas well, lights. Uh, that I know. Okay, David. <laughs> so let me finish and don't interrupt. Yeah, go ahead, David. Now, when you're doing that, so therefore, I'm, have, I'd like to have an example. So if it was me, I'd abstain because I like to go down there at nighttime and see what they look like lit up. So I'm not aware of the difference between a regular light and what you're talking about and a decorative light. Okay, I can explain that a little bit. Um, you have a street light that's attached to a telephone pole that's probably 30 feet off the ground. Right. Okay. You're aware of those. Him well, across on, the street from my house. On, right. On Church Street and also Highland Ave and now on A, B, and Patisee and a little bit of Ashworth around the beginning there uh, are these what we're going to call decorative lights. They're a street light. They're on a pole. They have a round globe on the top. They're probably 15 or uh, not more than 20 feet tall. And the, the conduit under the road is already there, so they, they already know how far to space them apart. This was at the time, years ago, when they did all of the sidewalks and they did all of the I'm trying to understand that. And even the, the conduits. I, I understand what conduits are. No, 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 no. But I, the reason I'm pointing that out is that, um, Steve, you mentioned that they don't. They look like they could be spread out differently. At the time, a professional engineering company laid all that out, the sidewalks, the roads, everything else, and including the conduit. So um, they, they were put where they could be put. They can't be put in the middle of somebody's driveway, so they, you know, they have to put them because they're on the sidewalk. They're not up in a pole. They're on the sidewalk, coming up through. You see. May, may I suggest? Wait, are you, does that answer your question? Partially. I'd like to know how much light they throw compared to a regular street light versus a decorative light. A lot. They throw I, more I, light. Fred, could you answer that? Several times. More. Several times more illumination. Right. It's like daytime down there when these things are on. Yeah, it, yeah, it really it is. It is so gonna be. And you could go down there, drive through any time, any time it's dark. I will. Church Street, I Highland, will. you're going to see them. Yeah, if you would, please. Is yes. that, no, is that enough, David? Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, May I suggest we table this so David has an opportunity to drive down A and B Street? 
Uh, I don't know if that's necessary, Tim, but hold on just a minute. Sonny? Yeah, is there, this is just the beach, the 100,000. Is there Lafayette, another warrant article? Because I assume they won't. Well, I just started water. on the top of the yeah. first no, page. I understand. haven't gone down through yet. So. so, well, I live in the Highlands, and maybe we should propose a warrant for decorative lighting, you know. Well, this was something, Sonny, that was agreed upon <laughs> okay. many years ago. Yeah. No, okay. I, I understand a, that. This isn't a plan that they just come up with. I, I, actually well kind aware. of following through with something that was supposed to have been done years yeah. ago. It just wasn't yeah. finished. But it can be finished if the voters in this town no. decide to yeah. pass this warrant article. Okay? I'm well aware. You know, Bob Ladd's not here today. He's a representative from the beach, so, you know, you know the answers as well. So, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that um, I'm comfortable voting either up or down on this. Tim, I don't see that we need to table this so David can get on. <laughs> no, look there's at no it. reason to table. Um, I think that we can. Uh, you got about I think we can take a vote on this, so. either recommend it or not recommend it. If it doesn't get recommended this, by this board, it doesn't mean that the people, this committee, it means that this is going to go before. It'll, it'll pass off of our table and it'll go before the voters who are going to decide what's going to happen with yeah. that, this warrant article, okay? So I'm comfortable voting on it tonight. I don't think that we need to table it. No, no, nobody's proposing to table it. It's just... Okay. You know, Anybody okay. else have any comments on this particular warrant article? Well... Brian, I'm sorry, Jenny. I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead. Brian, go ahead. Um, it just seems to me there's more here than needs to be fixed than what we're seeing here. Explain. Um, the west side of um, Ashworth. Ashworth hasn't been done um, because they ran out of money. You're talking about sewers? Yeah. No, I'm talking about the lighting, lighting. for oh. as far as this goes. Okay. Um, and I don't think all the leaded streets have been completed either. No. That's what, see, they did A and B. This is going to do a little bit more. It's going to do C, D, and F. Okay. Right. So this isn't going to complete the project. This is something that's going to be ongoing for many years. We may not see this one article next year at all. Uh, I, I can't say, but it's here right now. And so um, the selectmen have decided to put this forth. They voted five to zero in favor of it, and and so this is where we are. Sonny, you had are you done, Brian? Uh, well, I just wanted to, to say that uh, it'd be nice to know where are we, and you know when can we finish? Well, because I think there's a lot more money that's going to be put into this whole project. Oh, to finish it, of course, but we're only going to get a little bit further along doing this, and if we bite off little pieces at a time, over a few years it'll be finished completely. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Sonny? Yeah, well, you know, the budget committee represents the taxpayers in the town, you know, and you know, we can just rubber stamp what the board of selectmen have done. That's really all we can do tonight. I don't plan to do that. I plan well, to vote yes or no. If I believe in something, I'll vote yes. If I don't believe in it, I'll vote no. What the selectmen have done no, uh, is th vote. they're the select board. What we do is what we do. So you vote your conscience, okay? You don't have to vote yes. You don't have to vote no. You don't have to vote at all. You can abstain. But um, I think that we have to move this. Our job is to move this so that the legislative body can vote on it, and they can decide if they want to spend the money. Okay, we're not deciding tonight whether this is going to be spent or not. We're just deciding I'm, if it's I'm going well to go. Aware the voters will whether we want to recommend it, okay, to the legislative body. Okay, yes, Tim. I think we all agree that street lighting deters illegal activity, right, as well as promotes safety in general, right. And it can look decorative and nice as well. It might improve. Yeah, it's the kind of a side thing, though. Yeah, the main function is to deter illegal activity and promote safety by being allowing people to be able to see what's going on. Um, which then begs the question, which streets 
are the least safe down at the beach, which streets have the most illegal activity going on. Um, is it these streets, or is it like G Street, or some other street? I think we all know that it's, these are not the most uh, problematic streets down the beach. Yes, Regina. I think probably the reason why it's these streets is just chronological. But you know, we did Highland, we did A, we did B. I so next would be C, D, F. Could make sense. I think that but makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's why those streets are chosen. Also, a good point you brought up, uh, Tim. But I would say that D and F are probably two of the busiest streets on the beach. D is along the side of McDonald's. F is along the side of uh, well, it used to be Old Pappy's or whatever. But as far as uh, traveling and. Uh, Mona cars and with the casino and et cetera. Those are two of the busiest streets on the beach, DNF. Yeah, but E has a parking lot there with What's lights. Not e, e has not E. There's, there's no E, Tim. There is no I'm E. Sorry. C. You get D along sorry. McDonald's. C is the one pariah, and then you have C. F C has a parking lot uh, next to it, which is lighted. And that, that's C fun. would be where Playland is. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's pretty it's pretty open. Um, and D also is, uh, you know, adjoins uh, the casino casino's parking lot, which is open and lighted. In the village district. So it's getting lot. it's getting well, ambient light from that as well. Right. But um, that, that's a that is a very busy. You're on both sides. Maybe busy, of the, but it, it it is fairly well lit, uh, by by its own nature, uh, because much of it is much of the property is not built on, so there's not a lot of shadows or anything like that going on, and it's not highly congested. Although they are busy, and maybe they're busy because it's not highly congested. I don't know. But I think the problematic streets are more along the lines of G Street. Okay. Uh, Jenny, go ahead. What do you call the balance that's left after you have all your revenues, you minus all your expenses, and you decide which how much money is going back to the tax base? What's that called? What's that fund called? I believe it's the unassigned uh, designated balance. general fund. Unass unassigned balance. Uh, which is what they're saying right here, right? Yeah. No. And it does not affect the tax rate, they're saying on this Warren article. Well, if you put it to reduce the taxes, yes, it does, in fact, mm -hmm. um, affect the tax rate. Correct. Well, hold on, okay? Okay. You're absolutely, if I, you want me to explain it a little sure. bit to the best of my knowledge, and if I'm wrong, then the town manager could correct me, yeah. okay? So we raised a certain amount of money last year from a budget that was approved by the legislative body. Yes. Okay. And now we're at the end of the year, we're in December, yes. and we have some money that wasn't spent. Okay? Right. So let's call that the unassigned balance. Because right. we couldn't, I don't want to call it a surplus because that's the name that a lot of people sometimes use, but let's just call it the unassigned balance. It's things that we have this money, but we don't have something to spend it on at the moment. So the town could say, okay, we've got X amount of money and we're going to apply it to reduce the amount in taxes, which is what they did. You may remember the selectmen voted just recently when they set the tax rate, okay, mm -hmm. the, to take 600 and something thousand dollars out of that fund, correct, Christy? Mm -hmm. And right. apply it to help keep the uh, the town manager's plan of having a flat, keeping the tax rate flat over a number of years, okay, and which is a very good plan. Now, the, with something like this, if they were to say, all right, this, we have 100000 here, instead of moving forward with this a little bit at a time, chipping away at this uh, project, we could give the $100,000 back to the entire town of Hampton. So you'd get $1, okay, probably, or maybe $1.50 or something. I'm, I'm just using a number. Right. You're not going to get $100 back because it's not enough money when you look at the amount of money that we spend. This is very, it's like a little drop in the bucket. I, I know that 100 grand is 100 grand, but yeah. it isn't all that much money. I'm sorry, okay. Um, in the big picture. So, a hundred grand here, a hundred grand there. Well, Pretty soon it adds up to real money. It's three cents. Uh, <laughs> three cents on okay, three okay, cents but right three, it yeah. would be three cents that you would get back, okay? I'd rather see the lights go up. I'd, I'd rather see this chipped away at a little bit at a time. But, Ginny, that's the amount you'd get back, three cents, okay? Okay. So, it, does that answer your question? Three cents per thousand. Three cents per thousand. Three cents on the tax rate, right? 
Okay, okay. We, right we now, need to right now, clarify that. Change, yes. For that. Last year, it was every 100000 that you gave back, it reduced the tax rate by 3 cents, I believe. Per 100000 Per 100000 Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know. Mr. So Chair. You, buy, you won't even be able to buy a cup of coffee, but... It depends on where you buy your coffee. Hold, hold on, Sonny, you had your hand up. No, let him go first. Please, David. <clears throat> From what I've heard, I definitely buy <coughs> proper lighting on all parts of the town, period. <clears throat> That's bottom line. In doing that, one of my questions would be, now they're not a little bit about decorative lighting, but if you put regular lighting in, in this, which is if it's needed that much at this particular street, I'd have a certain plan on which streets need to be done and which ones are the darkest. That's number one. The second thing I would do is I'd find out, well, gee, if I do this with this type of light, are there any ones that work just as well but that more more economical to purchase? So this might be decorative, but I'm making this up, by the way, like you make them up. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it could be like twice as much money for this light it is for a regular street light that's on a pole outside my house. I'm making that up. So I'd like to look at the comparisons of cost of the light so we can get the most bang for our buck. Do we need the lighting? Yes. Should we do lighting? Absolutely, yes. But I just... At the bottom, just saying 100000 is objective what the other people had over the last five years. I, I, I struggle okay. with that. Now, I might be wrong, and the, the town manager can correct me if I am incorrect about saying this. But you see, the street light that's up on the pole, we don't own that. That belongs to the electric company, Fred. That's right. And then we pay, we pay per <coughs> month for every one of those. And they're not cheap. because, And I know that for a fact because... I have to pay for a couple of them down at the beach myself, the ones that are up in the poles. They're not cheap. So you're going to see a separate line item. We haven't gotten that far in this budget yet, but you're going to see one for street lighting, and it's a lot of money. Now, these, these you're lights that... not giving me any metrics. No, no, no. This is a lot, these lights, a lot. This little. It means nothing to me. These lights that we're putting up, the town will own, correct? That That's correct. Okay. And they're going to be LED lights, so they're going to be fine. very efficient. LED leads are fine, but they're different poles. My, my, my general question is, am I looking for a new car? Or the, the town, the, the town uh, maintenance department needs a new uh, dump truck. They look around and they try to get the best money for the economy for where our needs are. And all I'm suggesting is these might be good and they might be LED lights, which I believe in 100%. But my question is, is there a, is like a comparison bid? Pretend three contractors would come in here and bid on these lights. You can pay one versus the other. Would you, I'm just seeing here just some hundred thousand. We're going to do these streets. And you know what? I might be wrong, David, but I believe that what would happen is if this Warren article passed next March, okay, um, Fred, do you have to encumber those funds now? No, no, we need to those funds when they're expended. Okay, so at that point, <clears throat> I'm sure that the town of Hampton would go out and bid this job. Okay, and get the best bid that they could, the most bang for the buck, and it, they would go as far as they could with $100,000 with a vendor that would install them, and that's how that would go. That's how it, <clears throat> and they'd get as far as they can, and then they might come <coughs> back a year from now, two years, ten years from now, and say, now we want to do a few more streets. I don't know what the future is going to bring, but this is what we have in front of us right here. I'd like to see that we should have some of these figures for us because we're voting on budget stuff. They're readily voting on, on agreeing with an amendment for a warrant, whether we agree or not. It's going to go up as a warrant. I understand that. And the voters should vote on it. I understand that. And if the selectmen will find zero, I understand that. But I'm not going to make a decision upon I haven't looked at it. If I was going to buy a car, I wouldn't have other people buy it for me. Well, I'd like to know a little bit more beforehand. Okay. And I'm not getting that information outside of generic yes, statements. So okay, I can't now, make a good decision. Hold on, Tim. Okay, you can't make a good decision. Now, further on down here, we're going to be talking about drainage and appropriate, raise and appropriate $80,000. And I don't see a list here of all the pipes they're buying and, uh, and how each joint's going to fit together to something else. Um, I don't know if we need that level of detail, okay? If you feel that you do, if you're not comfortable with this with voting for this, then vote no. I that's I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong with this? I, so. no. I mean, you know, we can discuss this one.
thing all night if you want to keep going back and forth in this, but we can also vote on it, okay? Go ahead, Tim. And we're not going to table every single one of these uh, because we, when uh, are we going to get to them? I'm, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm sim I simply want to point out that we can either table it with questions to be pending, to be answered, or we can vote on what is put in front of us. Or we can ask that's, the questions that's, that's, right now. Ask the questions to Fred. Ask your question. What do you? What, <coughs> how much of a breakdown them. do you want? I've, you just I've, heard them. I've got a question. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Mr. Welch, please, they have so many questions that need answering. We need your professional help, please. Well, I don't know about the professional help. I did used to run an electric utility, so I guess I know a you little bit You might have a little more lighting. knowledge than us. Uh, first of all, the conduit that was installed is in series. So you're going to have to do the streets as it's they run down short. because you have to wire them that way. All right. uh, and you have to put the lights up in order to, to, to run the system. <clears throat> so you've got to go starting with... This particular warrant article with uh, C, D, and F streets, and then you can go on to G and so on and so forth down the road. Um, these lights will be owned by the town. The lights that are up there now are owned by the utility company, and we have no right to attach their poles. They're the only ones that have the right to put street lighting up. So if you want to keep their lighting, which is less efficient than this lighting, then please go ahead and do that. Uh, incidentally, if their street lights burn out, we still pay for them, whether they're operating or not. That's just one of the little hitches that they have in their utility billing rates. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great system. So they all don't work, and we, we, we keep can't. I'm exaggerating with the example. Now, well, we have lights out all, all over town occasionally. I mean, they, they burn out occasionally. Right. And we do pay for those until the electric utility can change them, and they'll change them when we call them. So we have to send somebody out at night to make a listing of where the poles are. So they can, we can give it to them, and they can come change them. I will say Fred, that Fred, what do we pay the unit to for the for the lighting? A couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. They did, they did have one of the lights in front of my house burn out, and I would have to say I was overly impressed with the unit because the next day or the day after they had a new one in. Uh, they were great on service. So. Yeah, they're, they're good, uh, and they probably had a street light patrol that week, so that's sunny, why they changed sunny. it. I called them up. Sunny, sunny. Yeah. sunny. You call them, they come out. Yeah. Sunny. Through me, okay? okay? Not just a free for all. David, you still have the floor. You have more questions for, for Fred? Well, you said they're more economical. And it's again, it's a generic term. What's more economical? 2% less, 10% less, 100% less? You know, there's, there's other things that go into it by just generic statements. And I like to look at one street light and see what it costs or whatever. We can do that. Your, your, your street light's going to be up there. You're going to pay for it for 50 years okay. because the amortization is 50 years on the street lights. It's a general rule. So if you take that street light down early, you're going to pay the balance of the 50 years amortization. Now you talk about the you. Utility street light? Or yes, talking? I'm talking about the utility street light. So when these go in, the other ones are coming down. Is that They're correct? coming down as part of the agreement with the utility. That was all done back when the, the, the beach streets were put together and redone and the sidewalks were done and the, the piping was put in for the sewer and the, the new water lines were put in and so forth. Um, so we're getting, we're getting a good deal with this because, yeah, do we have to pay a little bit of depreciation? Yes, but we don't have to pay the entire thing. They're really good with us on that. Um, the intention here is to better light those streets. And uh, if you go down there at night and it's a dark night, you're going to have difficulty seeing because those lights are 30 or 40 feet in the air and they don't shine and light those streets up very well. They're, some of them are pretty dark. So this would solve that problem. Uh, I think we're changing six lights currently on uh, Church Street uh, that are currently out and we just, we've just hired someone who want to put LED fixtures in those, uh, bulbs in those so that we can, we can put those back in service. Uh, the rest of the lights that we own are, are standard regular incandescent lighting. Okay, but it's, it's extremely bright. It, it does light up the street very well. Uh, this is really, from the standpoint of a utility, this is a lot of savings <laughs> to the town over a period of time. Uh, this is similar to what you would have with, with, with a municipal light department, your street lighting, which is very, very cheap. Uh, the utility makes a substantial amount of money on street lighting because they have to. It's just part of the deal that they need to recover their costs and their maintenance and so on and so forth. These lights, I think we've had in the history of the time these have been up, which is a lot longer than I've been here, a lot longer than 10 years, uh, we've had six lights burn out. 
That doesn't happen with the utility companies. So they burn out more frequently, and we do pay more frequently. When they burn out, are they easy to change and put a new bulb in, or have these are these are the, the, pretty the, simple. Yeah, the cover comes off, and you change the bulb fitting. That's that's the cake. That's it's a piece of cake. Yeah. On uh, the utility tr uh, lines that no. that are out there, it's major. I that watched that gets it. to be a pretty big deal depending on the fixture. Right. Yeah. Thank you. And these are called uh, decorative fitting, uh, decorative lights. That's just because that's what the catalog says. And that was what the original original that agreement threw was. Me for, uh, yeah, it's it's different. Like uh, there's white white fixtures which are different. Uh, there's lumin different types of luminaires. Uh, there are different types of standards and so forth. This just happens to be a single standing ornamental pole. That is to say, it's more decorative. Right. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. All right, Sonny, you had a question from yeah, Mr. Welch. Right. I'm aware of the town of Manchester or the city of Manchester change their street lighting to LED. Why doesn't Hampton ask Unitil to put LED lights in to get, give us a I don't know, cost amount? You know, uh, if they put LED, the cost should go down substantially. Well, it, you misunderstand how they build street lights. Street lights are built on a lumen daylight schedule. They have a schedule that's approved by the Public Utilities Commission that costs you so many cents per hour to light that fixture regardless of what's in it. It doesn't make any difference. There's no standard uh, lighting schedule for different types of yeah. fixtures. Well, it would make a lot of sense if the whole town went LED. It would. And if and you, if you would, owns them, so. If you would care to pay for it, the utility would be well, happy to do it. for it anyway. Uh, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> the utility company, when we change to... Uh, from the regular mercury luminaires to the high-pressure sodium luminaires, the town had to pay for that. Had to pay for the installation, had to change for the, <coughs> for the makeover of the fixtures. All that was charged to the town. So oh, it sounds like it's a negotiation that's on the table. Actually, no, it's in their rate structure. So we don't negotiate that, we have to pay it. So if you want to go to the additional types of luminaires, there was a schedule for that and we'd have to pay that. Okay. The, other, the question I had about the beach lighting. Well, that's what we're talking uh, about. Is, does the beach precinct have an advertising budget to bring people? How many people come in from out of town to look at the decorative lighting? I don't think they come into town. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to ask. Millions. Yeah. I think you'd have to ask, Sonny, have you seen this lighting? It's not Christmas not tree. Year. It's no. not Christmas tree lighting. Light days, don't be yeah. mis. You know, don't please don't go down the wrong rat hole here. When okay. somebody says decorative lighting, it's not Christmas lights. It's a street light, okay, on a pole. So, anything else, Sonny, about uh, this one article, Tim? Which is called decorative in the catalog. Anyway, Mr. Chairman, I hope that the town manager can stay where he is for the rest of these one articles, so that we can be more quickly informed. And, and save time going oh, forward. Oh, that would be wonderful. Okay, uh, any further discussion on this? Yeah, oh. I just have a couple of quick questions. Go ahead, ask the, ask, please ask the town manager. Mr. Manager, do you have any guesstimate on the cost difference between decorative and non-decorative? I could pull out the schedule and, and actually do some calculations for you. What would be uh, a gut? I would say we're probably, because we have no amortization on this, it's a straight purchase, right. okay? Once it's done... Uh, we're probably paying two or three cents a night to, to light these. No, no, I meant in terms of uh, the actual acquisition of the decorative light versus the acquisition of the non-decorative light. Well, the, if, if you're talking about a luminaire on top of a telephone pole, um, it depends upon the size of the fitting, but you, you, would, you would probably start somewhere in the area of five to seven hundred or a thousand dollars per fixture. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's for the small ones. And then, you know, as you go up to the 55,000 lumens and above, you're probably talking $2,500 a, a fixture. That includes, of course, mounting and installation. So def decorative versus non-decorative is 500 to 2,500 per pole? It could very well be, depending upon what you're putting. How many poles is this going to address, approximately? I can't. I think there's seven on each street. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So it's a reasonable number. I mean, we could actually maybe do an extra street if we went non-decorative. Well, if you if you go with the existing luminaires, 
Hmm. It will not be, and you, you, you can ask. We have a former police officer of the Hampton Police Department here uh, who's currently a police officer in another department. Uh, they would sooner have these streets well lit. I would as well, but my question is more decorative and non-decorative. That's the only cost thing I wanted to get a sense of. Well, the decorative, it's a, it's a title. It's a right. Can, these, we, these can, we get a, can we get the same illumination without the title for less money? That's the question. Well, it's it's the type of fixture, and that's what we're that's we're we're, we're trying to do uniform fixtures, so we don't have all these mm. non-uniform parts that we have to stock. Now you presented this as a means of us actually saving money over time. Right? Over time, that's correct. Right, but yet we haven't touched the stuff in you know eight or nine years, right? We haven't touched it because we haven't had the money to do it. Right. Why? Why suddenly now? I guess is the. It needs to be why done. Why did we do it last we year or two years ago? Larger years crowds of people. We have less police officers to mm -hmm. police the the beach. Uh, it's just essential for public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yes, sir. Fred, go ahead, Mike. Aren't these fixtures similar to the bridge going up to Newmarket on 108 that they redid, realigned? Well, they're... And, it, and that, that black pole... These well, aren't hanging fixtures. These are straight no, fixtures okay. with straight, a globe on Straight up with a globe, but, right. it, but sim that's a decorative light fixture up there that lights that bridge over the from the bay over the Go, bay going into Exeter yeah they're, they're so decorative the state shut them off well because <laughs> they couldn't afford to. we can't we, <laughs> we can't keep up with the state there. well but their maintenance was too high in those and they, they regretted putting them in they should have put in the type fixtures that we did yeah it was too but, but they're, huh? they're similar <laughs> yeah you learned your lesson after you put them up I guess wow they should have asked the questions yeah right? <coughs> these with, uh, the word decorative, it's just a word because I can tell you these are not that decorative. Okay, they're a pole with a light on the top. Yeah. It costs extra money. Can we just vote and move this thing? <clears throat> okay, we have a motion by Regina, seconded by Steve Henderson. All those in favor of recommending this Warren article, please raise your hand. Okay, David, I'm going to call the names out for you so you can write these down. David, yes. Mike Plouffe, yes. Steve LeBranch, yes. Steve Henderson, yes. Regina Barnes, yes. Sonny Kravitz, yes. Those in the name, opposed. Ginny Bridal Russell. Those not recommended. Does not recommend. <coughs> Brian Lapham does not recommend. Timothy Jones does not recommend. Abstained. Okay, do you have that, Barbara? I, I have it too because it's got to go on the warrant. Yeah. Okay. So how many? What do you have for a total, Fred? Recommend six to recommend, three not to recommend, no abstentions. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move the conservation uh, warrant article, but I would note that this can't be in final form because it doesn't have a fiscal impact on it. Um, so I'm moving it to uh, I don't know some point in the future where unless we decide to re-vote on it, we'll just leave this vote tonight. Before okay. It is, okay. Do you wish I'm not quite to sure how to phrase that. But <laughs> um, I think that... Um, so I'm moving that for $20,000. Um, would you like to please read the entire motion, the entire uh, warrant, warrant no, article? I don't want to read the whole thing. I'll just tell you what it is. It's uh, I will read it then in that okay. case. Okay. Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. This is for the record, Tim. We can't just run right through these first glance. When did you get a long one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then we may change our mind. Okay. We may change our mind at that point. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hamp Hampton Conservation Commission Fund? This fund is used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of or otherwise conserve and property properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36-A, colon sections 1 through 4, inclusive. Recent acquisitions such as the Bachelor Field conservation easement have significantly reduced the size of the fund, and the goal is to return the fund to adequate levels to enable the commission to conserve additional lands on behalf of the town of Hampton. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to 0. Do I have a motion on I thought this? I gave you one. Oh, I'm sorry. And who seconded it? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, Sonny, you seconded it. Tim made the motion. Okay. Um, all right, discussion. 
this, isn't this a recurring war and a half of every year? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Yes, it is. Last year, I think it was 30,000. This year, they're coming no. in at 20. No, it was 20, no, 20. 20 last 20. year. Okay. Previous years, it was 10. Yeah. Then they upped it to 20. Okay. See, I was going in the... I was think. I knew it changed at some point. Yeah. All right. <clears> so, <throat> do we need to just... Uh, go ahead. Could I ask the finance director a question? I wish you would. <laughs> and And... and would you like to come up to it so that you can speak into a microphone, please, Christy? I know that you want to. The answer is one fifth of three cents. If it's based on last year. That's what I figured. One fifth of three cents. Point zero zero six. Okay, thank you. What was that far again? What was the question? That was the uh, finance, the tax impact for the twenty thousand. Based on last year's numbers. Yes, based on the April first. Yes. Yeah. How uh, much again? Evaluation. One fifth of three cents. Point zero zero six. <laughs> Point zero zero six. Thank you very much. Per thousand, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Per k. Hundred bucks. Right. Billion dollar house. Yeah. 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 All right. Any uh, yeah. further discussion on this? I have a statement article? that I need to make. My annual statement, which I'll be <coughs> briefer every year as I have been. Um, you go right ahead. Tim. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, money that essentially gets taken out of the taxpayer's pocket and put into a, another pocket in case they may need to use it. Uh, they say they needed to raise it to an adequate levels in the fund, but adequate levels is never, ever, ever defined. So we're never going to get to adequate levels. We're just going to keep asking for this money over and over and over again until they find some uh, really good excuse to spend it on some other thing like the bad shelter farm which was, in my opinion, a complete waste of money, and it cost us well over a million dollars to do. So I will absolutely vote no to this, not because I oppose the Conservation Commission. I think they do, in general, a great job and a lot of work. But I do oppose the idea of accumulating funds for unspecified purposes. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything to say about this Warren article? Seeing none, those in favor of recommending it? Okay, I will call the names out again for you, Barbara. Um, it's unanimous, okay. except me. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them out anyway. David, yes. Mike Plouffe, yes. Steve LeBranch, yes. Steve Henderson, yes. Regina, yes. Sonny, yes. And Ginny, yes. Those opposed? Uh, me. Tim Jones and Brian Lapham. Mr. Chairman, I move the uh, fire department pickup truck with plow for $51,000. Okay, thank you very much. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $51,000 for the pur purpose of purchasing a utility pickup truck with plow for the fire department? This ve vehicle will be multi purpose for use in the winter to haul equipment and materials for clear clearing off hydrants during warmer weather. It is used, utilized as uh, in the forest fire roll, it is also used to haul equipment to and from fire scenes and to tow all Hampton Fire and Rescue Trailers, including for transporting Marine 2. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32,7,6 and shall not lapse until this project is completed or by March 31st, 2020, whichever is soon a majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. Tim, you made the motion. Who seconded it? <coughs> Ginny? I'll second it. I okay. have a question. Okay. Um, questions? Comments? Ginny? Regina, why wasn't this put in the fire department budget? <laughs> I, don't know, I will defer that question to the town manager. Fred, why wasn't this put in the town in the fire department budget, or was it not, was it eliminated and then moved to warrant article? No, actually, the fire department requested it as a warrant article. The selectman accepted that. They had two. They had two capital purchases in the Long Range Capital Expenditures Program. There was the pickup truck and a platform ladder truck. The ladder truck was taken out for one million five hundred thousand dollars, and the pickup truck was left. So it was left as a warrant article. Okay. So they gave up the one million five hundred dollars ladder. Truck. Right. Okay. You're done, Ginny. Yep. Uh, Sonny, go ahead. Yeah. Maybe we, this is a good warrant article to put an amendment made in America. Made in America. Okay, thank you, Sonny. Anybody else? Um, Tim? Fred, can you tell me why or under what conditions you would foresee that we, assuming this article passes, 
under what conditions you could possibly imagine that we wouldn't be able to execute this transaction within a year's time frame? It depends on what's on it. We've been trying to buy trucks. We had an, a warrant article two years ago to buy trucks. We just got them. It's it's. How long did it take to, to make the financial transaction? Though? Well, the financial transaction isn't isn't made until after we actually so, receive yeah, the vehicle. delivery. Yeah. yeah. We've been having terrible experience buying equipment. It's really getting worse. In fact, the last uh, dump truck we purchased. If it, it's still under warranty, if it breaks down again, it's going back. We're not going to. We're not going to keep it. We'll have to provide so this warrant article provide you a three-year window to buy this truck. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> try, obviously try to me. expedite it sooner than that. But you know, it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I just find it rather interesting. I I, I support this, and uh, I'm ready to vote whenever you are ready to call the vote, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anybody else have anything to say about this? Seeing none. Those in favor of recommending this. <clears throat> Warren article, please raise your right hand. Raise your hand. Right and hand. we have David, Tim, Steve LeBranch, Steve Henderson, Regina, Brian, Sonny, and Ginny. Those opposed? Mike Plouffe. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, that we engage in a study of town flooding issues for hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise an appropriate sum of $100,000 for the purpose of hiring a consultant engineering firm to study and report, report on the impacts of and solutions to flooding from the Hampton River and Hampton Harbor onto and along the west side streets off of Ashworth Ave, comma, Brown Ave, and the Island Path and Glade Path areas and the flooding that occurs from New Hampshire Route 101 north to Winnicunna Road, including the Hampshire Route 1A <coughs> and in the area surrounding Meadow Pond, including High Street, Kings Highway, Gentian, Gen Gentian? Yeah. Gentian yeah. never heard of Green, Green Meadow Pond roads, would said sum of one hundred thousand dollars to come from the unassigned general fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years, as of December thirty first, twenty seventeen, and no additional amount to be raised from taxation in this tax year. This will be a non lapsing appropriation for RSA thirty two colon seven comma six and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March thirty first, twenty twenty, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, no tax impact required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, zero five. Five zero. Five. Oh, five zero, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. After Jenny seconds this, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to second this? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say it's now up to six cents per thousand. I'll say okay. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the second one, article, Fred, where I see unassigned general fund balance, and it's my understanding of Oh, wait, 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 Tim. Did you second this? I did. He did. Good. He did. Okay, Barbara, seconded by Jenny. Go ahead, Tim. And it's my understanding it's actually called the unassigned fund balance. It's the so unassigned general fund balance. The actual phrase is unassigned general fund balance? That's what they put in the report. So we use this, what's in the report. That's what it's called. They change the name about every other year. I noticed that. It's yes. like, it's like a, a yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kept everybody refers silver, to you know? it as the unassigned <laughs> fund balance. That's why I'd rather just call it damn surplus, because everyone understands what that well, means. Well, but there's more than one unassigned fund balance, so... <laughs> Is there? <coughs> yes, there is. Okay, this we're going to general talk funds on a sign. <coughs> we're going to talk about funds later on. <coughs> so, yeah, but that is not on the list of funds. Okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're not talking about funds right now. That's on our agenda for later on. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. I'm ready to vote in favor of this as soon as you're ready to call for the vote, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Anybody else have a comment, Sonny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. It's a three. It's a potential three-year study. I mean. What's takes time to acquire it? What do you have a question, Sonny? <coughs> yeah, I mean, there's nobody in the town. That you don't know what to do to raise the the land so that the the flood, it, the water stays where it's supposed to stay instead of coming perhaps, down the highway. <coughs> perhaps, perhaps, uh, Mr. Welch, you could explain what Sonny. Perhaps give him some direction. This needs a professional engineering study. We're going to be working with the Army Corps of Engineers and other federal agencies and state agencies in order to try to put together a system that will address the flooding issues that we currently have in town that are getting worse. And they will get even more uh, on the, the, the bad side of the scale uh, because the town of Salisbury 
15 years ago applied to the Army Corps of Engineers, and they are now building storm walls on the inside of the river mm -hmm. uh, so that all that water that used to go up into their marshes is now going to come down into us, it's going to be displaced and brought to us. So we need to actually have a very good professional study done and then apply for the appropriate funds and the, the federal funds and state funds in order to get corrective actions taken. Sonny, does that answer your question? Right. Pretty much, okay. Mind you, <clears throat> mind you, this is $100,000. We're, we're moving forward on yeah, this. Right. That particular it's project that they seven, did five. in Salisbury, Massachusetts, took, as Fred said, 15 years. It's been in the planning. They're just getting to it now. And we we are going to have to address this flooding, and this is step one. Yeah. Okay, it's a baby step, well, but step, we're, it's a step. It step has to be three taken. is the DPW gets... <clears throat> Let's so start with step one. That's another okay. step. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about this one article? Brian, go ahead. <clears throat> have you done any engineering studies to any of these roads already? No. Any other questions, Brian? Um, no. Okay. Not for flooding. Obviously, we, we you engineer new piping when it goes in and so on and so forth, but not for flooding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Seeing none, those in favor of recommending this, please raise your hand. We have David. We have Tim. We have... Okay. We have Mike Plouffe and Steve LeBranch, Steve Henderson, Regina, Brian, Sonny, and Ginny. Good. Then we're, that was everybody. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, if yes, I may sir. move. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. So that would have been nine yeses. Zero, zero. Okay. Called unanimous, yeah. If, if I may yeah. move $10,000 for the annual hazardous household waste collection activity. Second. All right. Thank you, Mike. I consider okay. this a no-brainer. We do it every year. It's only 10 grand. Let's just vote. All right. I, um, I'm comfortable with not reading this only because I, I'm not going to have a voice after another one or two of these. So um, should I be reading this, Fred? You don't have to. Okay. No. So I move that we consider it read as written. Red is written. I like. I always like that. Red is written. Any discussion on this very simple thing that we do every year? Jenny. Have we always asked Hampton, so said Hampton Falls and Newcastle to participate? Or we have, mean? since oh. we've been doing it, and, okay. and they actually pay us for the number of cars that come in. We've okay. got charging them for car basis. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We started at 20 originally, and then it was dropped to 15, and now it's down to 10. Right. We're not spending the whole amount that we had. We're sharpening the pencil, Christy. Thank Plus you Plus, we're much. getting state aid. Well, I like oh, that too. I like that too. All right. Any further discussion? Which is always okay. Good. <laughs> All those in favor of recommending this article? Unanimous. It is unanimous. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Chairman. Much. I'd like to move human service agencies for one hundred seventy-two thousand and twenty-four dollars. <coughs> Thank you, Mike. And Mr. Okay, Chairman, I might point out that this is actually a reduction from last year, <coughs> and I would I would love Fred to give kudos to the agency that actually stood up and said. We don't need as much money because we didn't spend as much money. I believe they got some federal funding, if I remember hearing correctly, from yeah, the Yeah, but they stood up and said we don't need as much money. From Hampton. That is right. correct. That's right. Correct. And I think they deserve some kudos for that. Yeah, they, they've already gotten them. Well, we, let's we do appreciate, it again. Yeah. Who, who are they? i got to look at the list. There's so many of them here, they boggle your mind. It's Richie McFarland's It's Richie McFarland's Children's Center. Yeah. Right. And they've, they've done a terrific job for the children of the community where the need is. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they have acquired additional funding from outside sources. And as a result, <coughs> they have lowered our, our request. So kudos to Richie McFarland's Children's Center for being so upfront and honest with us. I know. I appreciate it. And as a consequence, this article is actually lower than last year's article by... Uh, like 2450 bucks, something like that. Correct. But you may not have noticed, Tim, that if you go down three more lines, the Rockingham County Meals on Wheels actually asked for a little more money. But at the same time, it's still less than last year, the bottom line. Well, Fred keeps an eye on this, this, this puppy, and I assume that means they're feeding more people. They are, and, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a hitch with Meals on Wheels. Uh, that I discovered a few years ago, and that is that uh, because we actually thought about cutting their appropriation at one point, 
and we were told we could certainly do that. However, uh, they would not be providing any Meals on Wheels to the people in the, in the community if we did that because they actually run a deficit every year. So this number actually does reflect uh, serving more meals? It does. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any Let's other, just vote. Any other, um, any other discussion? Seeing none. The second, please. Who was the second? Who was the second? Mike. Me. Mike Plouffe. Me. Mike Plouffe was the second. Tim, were you the... Uh, I was indeed. You were. Got to move okay. along here, guys. We do. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of recommending this article, I see unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, if I can move uh, this thing called King's Highway Drainage, which apparently <laughs> takes uh, 80,000 80, bucks. And I got a second from Mike, I believe. Yeah, you did. Okay. We so I, I, I might ask Fred to speak briefly is about what the genesis of this is, what the okay. essence of this is. We, As you know, we have flooding problems at Meadow Pond and the other upper end of Meadow Pond and High Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we fortunately have an old sewer line that runs from High Street down Kings Highway to 12th Street, and there's a pump station there. Yeah. So we'd like to take advantage of that and uh, tie that in, clean that, and tie that in, uh, and the pump station is already cleaned tie that into a drain system that we would build from 12th Street down to Winneconnet Road, mm -hmm. and we'd be able to stop the flooding up there and get that water out of there and clear the water in the streets so people will stop having problems <coughs> with their basements and properties. If I could ask... Uh, this this is, is the, the engineering cost. Yeah, this is a no-tax impact because you're taking it not from the unassigned general fund balance but from the undesignated general fund balance. Yeah, well, it should say unassigned. But okay, so <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get that corrected. It'll, it'll be changed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> anything else, Tim? No, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Anybody Chairman. Anybody else have anything to say about this? We're up to eight cents per thousand. To eight cents per thousand. Thank you, Jenny. Is that a cumulative total you mentioned? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Seeing none. Again, uh, the second, please. Was Mike, Mike Plouffe? Plouffe. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of recommending? Consistent here. It looks to be a unanimous. Thank you very much. Nine zero zero. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I sir. may move yes. the reconstruction of a portion of Lafayette Road for one and a half million dollars. I'm not going to second to be, that. Well, you don't have to vote for it. Just to, second it. So to we can be raised and appropriated. I'll okay. second it. Okay. Thank you. Seconded by Regina. Okay. You know, Fred, would you just speak uh, to the essence of this, please? I will. Uh, the current pro process out on, on uh, Lafayette Road to replace the sewer line has been stopped. We've, we've, we've put the contract in limbo. Uh, we ran into ledge. We're currently clearing that ledge. We'll be back in the spring. We can't be out there doing it now because of the holidays, because of the winter coming and so forth. And we can't get asphalt really at this point in time and lay it on streets because of the, the cold weather. Uh, we'll be back in the, in the, uh, the early spring. Uh, to finish that sewer replacement <coughs> up. And at that point, if this article passes, we will be re installing drainage for the entire same length of the, the roadway where the water and sewer were replaced. And we'll also be repairing the sidewalks and uh, putting in street lighting that is similar to what we're putting in at the beach and then repaving the road. May I ask you, Fred, uh, what will be the impact of dealing with Lafayette Road if this does not pass? Well, that's a good question because uh, there's, there's funds to pave it, yeah. okay, which is in the, uh, the, the, both the previous, water and the sewer point. replacement, and we're holding those funds, obviously. Right. It would be repaved, uh, so it will be nice and smooth, uh, but that other work would not be done. So the uh, drainage issue that last year's warrant article was intended to address will not be addressed, is that, is that right? Not. Last year's warrant article was not intended to address drainage, okay, only so sewage. This is not going to have an effect on drainage at all. Yeah. Well, there, there will be drainage there, but the drainage is very poor. It's, 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 it needs to be replaced. It's, it's all uh, uh, vitreous clay pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the sewer line. It's, it's cracked. It's, it's, it's aged. So it's leaking? Uh, it's leaking. Okay. And gosh, gosh knows what it's sucking the in in addition line, to being leaking. The sewer line is leaking. Well, the sewer line was not leaking. The okay. sewer line had the top of the sewer Missing. had disappeared. Right. right. Well, we, one of the reasons we were... Now the earth is the top line. Uh, it, it basically, just yeah. it was just compacted earth that was the, right. the top of the pipe. Um, we replaced it simply because we had some blockages in that particular sewer line. If those blockages had occurred further down, we probably would have had a giant sinkhole in the middle of Route 1. So we needed to replace that 
in order to solve those problems. So if this doesn't pass and we aren't able to take care of under the street issues such as the... Under the street issues will be taken care of. Even if this doesn't pass? That is correct. Okay. Because, just to clarify, Tim, this is drainage and sidewalks and even ornamental street lighting. <laughs> and it says the installation or ornamental. It should say installation of. of. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's it's drainage. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I it's think runoff, runoff, ornamental right? could be. Drain, when you say drainage, you're talking runoff, right? We're, we're, we're talking manholes, we're talking catch basins, we're talking catch uh, basins. piping. It stuff that comes from the clouds and falls we down. We hope and it, it only up, comes right? from there. Yeah. Well, someone might spit as well, right? Well, we are more, more worried about a break in a water main or something of that nature. Right. But that's basically all classified as runoff generally, it's right? It's basically classified as runoff. So this is only going to address runoff and sidewalks, which we have a separate one aqua for, and we also have sidewalks in the budget. Not for this particular... No, not, not, no they don't specify what location they're for. Okay, but we do have money set aside for sidewalks in general. Um... And then, of course, decorative lighting, right? Ornamental. Mm -hmm. We want to increase the lighting. Ornamental. Is there a difference between ornamental and decorative? Apparently, this well, says ornamental. It's all decorative, but it's also ornamental. <laughs> is it like Christmas tree lights? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm glad to say it is not, uh, although we could put the lights on behind you over there so we, we could have a comparison. But we do have lighting there presently, correct? We do have lighting there. It is commercial lighting. All right. It's not very effective from the standpoint of what we would put, we would be putting in. Okay, because I again take a look at what's down the beach currently. Well, it's a little different because when I go down downtown, and I drive down that street, regardless of what time of day it is, I always feel like it's sufficiently lit. Unlike certain streets on the beach. Well, during during the daytime, it is sufficiently lit. There's right. No question but even that. at night, you get a lot of traffic, so you get a lot of headlights. There's a lot of traffic on that road. There are also told, people who use that road place. frequently <coughs> at night when traffic the volumes are extremely low. Uh -huh. Of course, they'll probably pick up now that they're going to increase the tolls. Mm -hmm. But all those people will have headlights, won't they? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tim, thank you. Now, we're taking this money out of the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, yes, all sir. of it, mm -hmm. so there's no tax impact. But there is an impact in terms of what roads are not going to get done because we took the money out for this, right? <coughs> the so roads all the other roads that were planned, in other words, we sold the voters on the idea, let's put money in this capital road improvement fund because we wouldn't get these streets done. And now those, some of those streets at least won't, will at least be delayed if we take a million and a half out to do this. Fair and statement? This street would be delayed if we took a million and a half out to do something else. Right, but th it would still get paved. It would still get paid. All right, okay. Yeah. Just think. Yeah. I want clear understanding. Thank you. You're welcome, Tim. Um, Thank you, too, Mr. Chairman. You're most certainly welcome. David, do you have a question? Yes. Fred. Sir. Last year, if, if I remember one of the Warren articles or something at the end of the year, there was a group of people down the beach. They wanted $300,000 to evaluate or address or make studies of. And I thought that was going to be along Lafayette Road. Am I wrong? Between the front... So where does that three hundred thousand dollars go in reference to this work that you're doing? They wanted three hundred thousand dollars to investigate undergrounding all the utilities mm -hmm. on Lafayette Road. Okay. Through this section. Right. Okay. Uh, you must be coordinating with them or something. To well, do. they haven't finished their study at all. Uh, <coughs> it looks like in order to do what they would like to do, they're going to have to find another route to do it. They're actually thinking about going behind the buildings instead of down the street. Behind the buildings? Yes. To go down the street, they would, uh, would what be they a monumental task. What are they trying to do? Behind the buildings? Well, that's that's not an uncommon practice with electric utilities and, and, and wire utilities overhead. If you're going to bury them, to either do them overhead or, or bury them behind the buildings. And they need $300,000 to study what they're going to do? No, they need $300,000 for the engineering plans. Well, well that's... Yeah, they, I, I, that is a study, study in sense. Yes. yes. <coughs> but in this case, they'll actually have engineering construction plans. So it's got nothing to do with your, what, what we're talking about right None here. None whatsoever. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad you clarified that because that is something that I think that needed to be clarified. This is a separate thing. You are talking about separate thing completely. So. Good. 
Okay, Jenny, go ahead. Is that part of the, they were going to raise grants for that too, is that part of that? They're going to raise, try to, if, they're going to try to raise grants for the construction part of it. Okay, so first they're going to get three hundred thousand dollars from the taxpayers to do the study, right. mm -hmm. and then they're going to go after grants to execute it once they get the study. Well, it probably is appropriations as well because the grants won't cover all of it, I'm sure. Okay. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a marriage between the utilities, the town, and and grant systems. Okay. The other question I have is, what are you doing for these merchants? I mean, we've messed them up this summer. Mm -hmm. Are we messing them up again next summer? And are we leaving Lafayette Road now in the condition that's in for the rest of the winter? I can't pave it. The public works can't pave it currently the way it is. So right yeah. now it's staying that way through the winter. It is. Yeah. And next year we're going to have a plan for these merchants because they were pretty patient this year. I know they were. And we've, we've worked with them very well trying to get this done. Uh, we'd like to have a plan that <coughs> finishes up the roadway and gets, gets us out of there for the next 30 to 40 years. And that's what this would do because you've got to rebuild the road. So you're not going to have to go in there except maybe for an overlay at night sometime in the next 12, 15 years. I understand that, but if you have two summers of no sta of limited sales or reduced sales, you aren't going to be around for the next 10 or 20 years. Well, that's why so, we're doing it at night. Okay. We, we, we don't want to shut the merchants down, and the merchants that do stay open at night, there's a couple of restaurants. <coughs> We've been trying to adjust traffic flow so they, in fact, can have traffic and, and stay in business. Okay. Thank We're you. sensitive to that issue, too. Yeah. Thank you, Jenny. Um, Thank you. Well, hold on, Sonny. Regina? Well, Fred sort of just touched on what I wanted to say, but as far as, I mean, we unfortunately are going to have to dig the road back up in the spring for unforeseen circumstances, which is, I mean, we had a pipe. How old was that pipe? 1930-something. So yep. it was, you know, 80 years old. So unforeseen is understandable. But I think... This reserve fund was set up for big projects like this. And to repave Lafayette, to eventually have to dig it up again, like this way, like Fred said, it will be set for another 30, 40 years if this work could get done all at the same time. So I think that's why we decided to do it this year as opposed to putting it off. Okay, hold on. Uh, Sonny, go ahead. Yeah, if I recall, at one point, you were talking about putting the utilities on the ground and coordinating with, you know, doing it all at once. And I asked Chris Jacobs about putting bike lanes on the roads. You know, you could put, it seems to me if you're doing the sidewalks, you can see utilities under there, under the sidewalks, so you don't have to take out the highway every time. Sidewalk area is not wide enough for the utilities. Oh, you still you have, have three primary electric utilities, plus you've got the telephone, the cable company. Uh, there's not enough room on the sidewalks to put them down. The sidewalk on the west side has the water underneath it. Um, there is drainage uh, on the west side as well. On the east side is the sewer. Uh, and, of course, you've got all the cross connections running across the street. If we were going to put the electric utilities or the wire utilities, I'll call them, underground, we would have to dig up the center of the roadway um, probably almost as wide as almost but, half know, as wide as this room. The utilities have the right of way onto what eight feet onto the you, property. You, utilities don't have any right of way without a permit from the town. Yeah, well, they're I mean, there by permission. Yeah, and and if the town makes a decision that they're going to underground or require the utilities to be underground, the utility companies will have to put them underground at their expense. The, the town will have to share. That seems to me this would be the time to. To do it so you could solve the problem for the next well, 40 years. We, we will see what happens when that article is finished and, and the money comes forward and the town is asked to do whatever they're going to ask the town to do with those those funds. Okay. I can't tell you what that's going to be because we don't know yet. Thank you very much. Um, anybody? Okay, question. Mike, go ahead. All, all of this money that we put in this road reconstruction fund. We did a patch on Exeter Road. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, a patch. I know that. And we said that would last three to five years, maybe longer. And the, and the discussion went that if we put that patch in there, grade the road, get the water out of it, and pave it so people can travel over it, it will be good for a temporary three to five years. Or maybe longer. Or maybe longer. But the discussion went 
Now we're going to hire the engineers. We're going to redesign that road. We're going to start at the bottom and we're going to build it back up. We won't lose the hot top because we'll regrind it and use it in the grading process to finish Exeter Road down at the intersection of Lafayette Road. Mm -hmm. It'll be all done. That just blew off the map and went away. And we're going to run this patch, spend a million and a half in the center of town. We don't know what we're doing with the underground utilities yet, but we've asked for the money. And Exeter Road's just, what, what's it going to be in five, ten years? No engineering plan, no way to fix it, and no money left in the road reconstruction fund. If you want to do that work on Exeter Road, <coughs> give me $5 million and I'll be happy to get it done because it's going to cost at least that, perhaps more. And on top of that, you'll have to repay it. You'll have to replace the entire sewer running up the road. That, that we'll was keep the road in repair, but the problem is that we have I know. tens and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, you know this, you've done I, roads, I okay, know it. Uh, of past due repair work on these streets, I know. putting $300,000 a year away in, in, in reserve is going to do nothing. This this is just a cap job on, on this section of Lafayette Road. I know. You can see the upper section of Lafayette Road is already splitting open. Yeah. It's going to have to be redone. Uh, in 10 years, I think we can hold uh, Exeter Road for it'll, 10 years at, at the outside, yeah. uh, provided we have do good, effective maintenance and the normal maintenance for hot top type pavements. But you're talking right now, you're talking 4 to $5 million to fix that road. I know. And we don't have it. And we didn't have it when we did the patch. I mean, you're, you're roughly, we're, we're expending three or four hundred thousand dollars a year I know. In, in paving, okay? Yeah. We have to stop paving soon because we don't have any more roads to pave because all the roads that we're going to pave, we're going to have to turn around and dig up again in a couple of years to replace the sewer lines. I talked it's, about that a couple of weeks ago. I know. Lane. I've been talking about it for ten years. I know. Uh, you're hundreds of millions of dollars behind in this program because you haven't been saving money. At $300,000 a year is a drop in the bucket. We're spending more than that just to pave roads, just putting a coating on top of them yeah. to keep them so they can be ridden on. When a current road needs to be redone. Terrible. It's in terrible condition. High Street needs to be redone. You, you don't have any idea, you know, you're probably talking somewhere in the area of $25 million to do those three roads to do them right. Yeah, bottom up. Three hundred thousand dollars a year isn't going to do anything. Okay, let's stick with this. Let's try to stick with this uh, Warren article. Sonny, do you have something to say about this Warren article specifically? Specifically uh, about this. Brought up. I just no, no. We're not going to talk no, about Exeter Road. Just, okay, we're not going to. We're talking about this Warren article. Is you have a question about this Warren article? We're not going to be discussing Exeter Road tonight. Any further? Thank you. Is this got to do with this Warren article? Don't too? I always stay on topic? This I time. hope you do. <laughs> Because we're getting a little off topic here. <coughs> Our current status with Lafayette Road relative to its surface. Yeah. Uh, if we were to just pave over it, assuming the Swan Article doesn't pass and we just pave over it. Right. How long before we're right back to where we are right now? Three to five years? Is that what I'm hearing? I'll give you the outside, maybe eight. Maybe eight years. So if we don't pass this Warren article, we can readdress this in eight years. Yeah, it won't cost you one point five million, it costs you about Well, you're assuming inflation that we can't Yes, on right now. But well, yeah. there will be going, some inflation. Yeah. Sure. There will be some. The cost of hot top goes up every year. We all see that in the business. Uh, the cost of hiring people, contractors to do the work to put in the facilities that need to be placed within the roadway surface. The cost of curbing, uh, the cost of lighting, the cost of just about everything is going to go up. So instead of looking at 1.5 million, you're probably looking put another add another million dollars to that. Yeah, but we'll be a much richer town in eight years than we are today. Because we're well, growing. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to win the international lottery because we need so. <laughs> All right. Enough said, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Any, any further questions, comments about this? Seeing none, those in favor of recommending, please raise your hand. And I see David, Stephen LeBranch, uh, Regina, Brian, Sonny, and Ginny. Those opposed? Steve Henderson, Mike Kluff, and Tim Jones. Mr. Chairman. Wait, wait. So what, what does that give us for number, Fred? Nine. Three. Six, six, six and three. Six. Nine total. 
Yeah, yeah. six three zero. Mr. Chairman, if yes, I may sir. move twenty grand for the maintenance of historic structures, Fred would have, after Mr. Pluff Second. seconds it. I'll ask Fred to speak sir. to the essence of this one. All right, um, Barbara. Motion by Tim, seconded by Mike Pluff. Okay, please, Fred. This was a uh, an old blacksmith shop that was rescued uh, with the the aid of a number of benefactors within the community. One of them sitting in this room. Yeah. Um, it was hauled up and, and placed on this piece of town property, and that's what it is. It's sitting on the ground. It needs to have a foundation put underneath it, not that we need to build a cellar hole, but we need to put a sound foundation underneath it, and we need to get rid of the rotting boards that are underneath it and protect it. It is a historic, <coughs> excuse me, a historic structure, and we need to protect that as one of the So towns. it's a building that was actually moved in its to its current location? Is that what I'm That's correct, okay. yes. And we own it. For the Victory Guard. Yes. And we own it. And we own it. All right, I'm ready to vote in favor. Of when you are ready to call for the vote, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Anybody have any comments about this? Okay, all those in favor of recommending, please raise your hand. So we have apparently everyone. Thank you very much. Nine. Mr. Chairman. Zero, zero. Yes, sir. Eight. I may one. move. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Where's the line? Okay. Brian. You opposed? Brian. Brian opposed. That's 810. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Jones. $316,231 for a highway block grant. Second. Mr. Manager, if you would speak to the essence Passed, of this. Uh, motion by Tim Jones, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Go ahead, Mr. Welch. Uh, this is the sum of money that is contributed to the town from uh, the state of New Hampshire under the Highway Block Grant Program. The money is to be used for the maintenance of town roads. Uh, this is the money that we use for paving. Up until this year, we've been adding another sum of money to it, but we've reduce this, the amount that the state is bringing in, because we need to go, fall back and group and, and, and take a look at some <coughs> of the roads that need to be done. Uh, at the same time, we need to, most of the roads that need to be done in this town at this point, uh, need to have new sewer lines underneath them. Now, we can either dig them up, and we're hoping to avoid that in many cases, because we're planning on lining some of them, if it's possible. It depends upon the condition of the pipes underneath the road. Most of them are clay, and they're not in very good condition. So, so we're, we're pulling back. This 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 takes care of uh, repairs to um, roadways, parking lots, uh, areas of town that uh, uh, that we need to continue to maintain so that we don't have slip and fall, that we don't have damage to motor vehicles, and we're able to plow them and keep them clean. I noticed you've got repairs to sidewalks here, which we're funding elsewhere. Well, we rip a road up sometimes. We rip the sidewalk up, too. So yeah. we're trying to cover everything. And uh, driveway openings. Driveway openings, uh, As we again, as we tear the road up, we need to med, med, uh, meld That's those the driveways that we, we damage into the roadway as we as we repave the roadway. It should, because it's our fault, we shouldn't be charging uh, so you're specifying certain streets and certain types of work, in general, correct, uh, ceiling work and things like that, certain streets, all of which is not necessary by law to do, right? But you're specifying it for some reason, I guess. Yeah, well, this is these are the roads that we, we had intended to do this year. Timber Swamp Road needs to have major reconstruction on it, so we haven't done it, okay? Woodland Road was done. Was done. It yeah. was done. It was. It looks pretty good, as yeah. a matter of fact. Yeah. So it doesn't uh, belong on this list, then? Yeah, Man Manchester Street needs to be done desperately, but there are some drainage issues there that we need to handle. So um, those items are going to come out of this, this warrant article because we, we these streets will not be done next year. So Woodland, Woodland Road does not belong here now? No. these are That's a carryover from the prior warrant article. Timber Swamp Road would be... Uh, a road primary uh, for, for repair at this point, but it needs to be rebuilt. It's basically a gravel road with liquid tar on it. Yeah. And then so it so this, is, this wording is going to get reworked. It's going to be re reworked, yeah. yes. So, so we I'm, have, we I'm, have I'm generally in favor of this, but I'd rather wait for the vote <coughs> for the rework to be done. Um, let me ask you a question, Fred. Hold on, Sonny. The um, Timber Swamp Road... Is that the um, the road that's going to be used for the new courthouse? That's correct. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. Is, is the state going <laughs> to? Uh, what? <laughs> what did you say? Since in your water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since the state's going to be 
using that road and, and having an entryway into the new district court that's getting built. Are they going to participate at all in this they, road? They have no responsibility for that. And no. our understanding is they'll maintain their own driveway and their own access way, but they will not maintain the town road. Okay, I just wanted to ask that question. And also the other question that somebody asked me just today, where is Manchester Road? Manchester Street, street, street. Oh, street. Is, I'm sorry. Is, is down the beach. It's on the beach. Okay. Right by, uh, a couple of streets up from Hobson. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Sonny, you had yeah, something? No, you raised the question I had. The courthouse, obviously, you're going to spend four million. They're going to spend around four million dollars to build it, and that's going to affect the condition of the road during the construction. It's a class five highway. Yep. It's not excluded from, from from construction vehicles. The town has to honor that commitment. So if the road is damaged, if it's damaged deliberately, overloads or something of that nature, then we have a course to go back against the vendor who's doing the well, work. How do you know if they're overloaded? Nobody checks the, the way stations don't function. So. Fred, um, Fred get, stands there 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have to get the state police out here with a weight scale team, and right. that's the only way you prove they're overloaded. Otherwise, you can't yep. even issue them a ticket. Right, thank you very much. Any further questions on this? No. Seeing none, uh, those, in, those in favor? I'm sorry, Brian? One quick question. And um, just out of curiosity, could we move the 316 to the previous one in article to do Lafayette Road? We, we as a budget committee, at, we've never seen the finish anything. The two different that things. Would help. These are two different things here. No, one I understand is, that. <coughs> I'm just money, asking if it was possible. No, I don't think we're talking about an account. This money is from the uh, highway block grant. The other, the other money is from the road improvement capital right. reserve fund. Right. Is that what you're talking? Those are two different things. That, Two different things, Brian. I understand what he's asking. And, I and know, I do too, but if it's... If you amend this warrant article, yes, you could use that money out there. However, if you do, there'll be no road work done in the rest of the roads in town. That's right. Okay. Correct. All that's, right. that's the problem. I mean, okay. we already have a problem at the fire station with it where uh, the back entrance way uh, to the fire station needs to be rebuilt because it's sinking. Oh, good. Uh, it should have been done when the building was modified, but it wasn't. Uh, and, and after they modified the building, we found out that the... the, the parking area immediately behind the entrance to the back of the building is sinking because of the weight of the vehicles. So we'll be over there working on that. Some of this money will go to that. Okay, good. See, that's a good... Glad you asked that question. Thank, you. Thank yep, you. Now you know where some of it's going to go. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would simply point out that I would be inclined to vote in favor for this. If you didn't specify the locations and used it uh, using your best discretion, maybe some of it well, goes to Lafayette Road or whatever, all I'm saying is I don't, you're going to rework this anyway. Why are you reworking it? As far as I'm concerned, you can take up all of these locations. It's a no tax impact. Um, do the right thing with the money you're getting from yep. the state block grant. You don't need to specify the work. Who knows how the other warrant article is going to turn out? You may need it elsewhere. No, no. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have you have more of a uh, a blank slate to work with than be tied into specific locations here. I just wanted to communicate that to you. Uh, I'd vote for it either way. If you're insisting on voting now, I'll vote in favor of it the way it is. But it's going to be reworked. Okay, so well, those roads are going to come out. I can tell you that. There mm. you go. I can tell you that last year we had specific roads in, and of course we received an extra grant from the state, which allowed us to, in fact, repair some roads that had just mm -hmm. deteriorated last winter and the winter before. So uh, they weren't planned, but we do have a planned road management program. So mm -hmm. and we would stick with that program and in and, and past votes you've been said you've in fact said when you finish your, your goals for this right. year, spend the money the on that program. Right. And we've been doing that. Okay, so we're comfortable with that, Tim. And so you can you can reword it as you choose. And so those um, that would like to recommend this, please raise your hand. And I see everybody. Unanimous. That's unanimous. Mr. Thank you Mr. very Chairman. much. Nine zero zero. If I may move the police forfeiture special revenue fund for ninety thousand dollars. I'll second. And get a second from Mr. Henderson. And simply point out that we don't normally talk about this. Last year we had so much time we talked about it exhaustively. 
And I don't think we need to talk about it all this year. It doesn't cost us a dime for okay. tax money. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm happy Barbara, to vote immediately. Barbara, we have moved by uh, Mr. Jones and seconded by Mr. Henderson, and I'm calling for a vote right now. Those who recommend? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Tim. Chairman, yes, if sir. I may move, I'm 31,000 <coughs> for the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. Second. Thank you. Ms. Okay, Mr. Seconded. Manager, would you like to speak to the essence of this Wait, one? wait, oh. Barbara. Moved by Tim, seconded by Regina. Please write that down. Okay. Uh, go okay. ahead. Please. Uh, the, the major expense here is to replace a portion of the kids' kingdom. Uh, we've been replacing little pieces of it as, as we've been going along, and it's reached the point where the wood is just in the process of failing. Uh, so we can't continue to add on new pieces to it. We need to replace the unit. Uh, and, and or at least part of it. Um, also, some of the tuck field fencing and netting needs to be replaced, uh, and the Director of Parks and Recreation is going to work to get those two projects completed. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, this is a no-tax impact. It comes out of the, yeah. the fund, which is funded by the parking lots, is that right? That is correct. And, and so it's really largely money coming from out of town. Our visitors pay for it. Yeah. So uh, it's basically a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned, and I trust the rec department will be doing the right thing with their box. I'm so sure. let's just vote. I'm calling for a vote. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to move $300,000 to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. Second. Seconded by, moved by Mr. Jones, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Mr. Manager, the essence, as you see it, of this warrant audit. This continues to lay funds aside for future road projects. Uh, that's where that $1,500,000 came from that we had talked about a couple of warrant articles ago for Lafayette Road. In the past, I've been opposed to this because there wasn't a, a road improvement program. There is now a road improvement program, there is. and I am now supporting it. Thank you. Okay, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, vote, please. All those in favor? Unanimous, Mr. nine zero zero. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. If I move fifty thousand dollars for a sidewalks, <clears throat> maintenance, repair, and reconstruction. Seconded by Mr. Pluff, no doubt. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Barbara, Barbara. Mr. Motion by Mr. Jones, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Mr. Manager, you want sir. to speak to the essence of this, or shall I? Uh, I'll be my guest <laughs> if you'd like to. We we keep putting money into Warren article for sidewalks. We also put money in the budget for sidewalks, and as we heard from other construction warrant articles, there's sidewalk work being done there, too. So it seems like sidewalk, sidewalk, sidewalks, but we still don't have a plan time-wide for when we get all the sidewalks done. I think the uh, assistant DPW director came in here <coughs> last year, and I asked her what the total cost would be to get us all ADA compliant, and she said something like, I don't know, $6 million or something like that. And $50,000 you know, it just isn't going to bring us very far in my mind. And until I see a plan, uh, like I did with the road improvement plan, I voted against it. I saw a plan. I'm beginning to believe that that's what I ought to do with the sidewalks until I see a plan. So, Mr. Manager, if you want to criticize Hold my on, statement, just, I'd be happy to listen with an open mind. Hold on just a minute, Fred. Okay, I just want to clarify one thing here. Mm -hmm. Because this, we just recently had DPW in here, and they had, what was it, $26,000, Fred, for sidewalks? And in the budget. Yeah, in the budget. And Jennifer yeah. explained that that is for pieces of sidewalk here, pieces for so up there, around town. Okay, This is specific. Okay, yeah. This is for Landing Road from 101 to Winnicott Road. It's a specific project. So that sort of answers the question that you were implying that this is money that's just going into nowhere. It's for a specific Sidewalk. That's an excellent point, Mr. Chairman. But I'd also point out that Winnicott Road, as we've already heard, is in terrible shape and needs resurfacing, and probably would be uh, more efficiently done as part of the road work itself. Doing the this isn't for well. the Winnicott. It's from it's Landing Road, Tim, from Winnicott over to 101. It's not Winnicott Road. You from see, Route 101 to okay. Landing Road. It's the right. connector. Up to yeah. Okay. It's a very oh, specific it's actually landing road. Yeah. Yes. yes, north basically. Yeah. Yes. Right. yes. So it's an actual 
Okay, yeah. specific project. Well, that's that's the one with the really tight curves and yeah, it's rather it's, dangerous. Yeah. And, Kids yeah. walk on it all the time. Yeah, that Pe needs a little work. All right, I'm convinced. Okay, oh. Jenny, you wanted to oh, yeah, mention something yeah, about yeah, this? Yeah, it's one of the busiest places because you've got the si skateboard park. You've got the yeah, I know, inline I know. skating. Yeah. You've got uh, dog, the dog. The people use it as a dog park. I appreciate park. everyone fixing yeah. my mind on this, so, and I now favor it. Okay, okay thank, thank you, you very much. There is a reason that this warrant article is here beyond that. And that is because a number of years ago, this was in the budget, but the budget committee cut it by $50,000. Not when I was here. No, not when you were here. Right, this entire amount of money, along with the 26000 that's in the budget now, was originally all in the budget. But because it got cut, and we tried to put it back in in one year, and the budget defaulted, uh, mm -hmm. we lost the money. So it's in the warrant article. Okay. That's a good explanation. Sonny, specifically yeah. about this? I just want to point out this is the last money went up. Warren article. Are there more coming? Or? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We'll be back to visit and have fun times again. Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, and Brian, you had something you wanted to mention about this? i got to ask that silly question. Is the engineering studies done for this? Uh, yes, we, 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 we have engineers on board who are doing the study. Okay. We, we, we were very insistent when we hired the director and the deputy director that both of them had to have engineering degrees, and they both do. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, shall we vote on this? Raise your hand if you want to recommend, please. And I see unanimous. Thank you very much. Nine zero zero. That ends the budget. <coughs> uh, let me see. The money weren't articles for tonight. There will be more in the future as... Our manager just pointed out. Now, we're on the next thing, we're going to be talking about all departments' gas slash diesel budget lines, and that would be Christy has that information. She met, she she sent out emails to everybody with a <coughs> lot of a lot of detail, and then um, just for the record, she she brought she didn't print out all of those details because I don't know if anybody looked at it, but there's very be a lot of paper. Instead she has a summary here for us with some attached uh, spreadsheets. So Christy, take it away, please. Alright, we're doing gas and diesel first, correct? Yes, please. Okay. So I did send the spreadsheet um, this afternoon. The reason it took so long is I was waiting so that I could update it with November numbers and they were not on the WEC site until Monday, so um, once we were able to download all of that. So this is the most up-to-date that we could be. So, gasoline and diesel. I gave a little summary memo here, and then there's some documents behind it. So if you'd like, I can just read through the memo and then if you would, please, briefly Christy. explain the yeah. uh, documents that are behind it. Yes, please. Uh, let's see. I'm attaching a few documents for your review and discussion tonight. You all should have received the Excel spreadsheet that I use to track gasoline and diesel. The first attachment is two pages and is a summary of the detail sheets in the spreadsheet sent to you. I have made some notes on adjustments that will need to be made in regards to police, fire, and recreation, which I will explain tonight. The next two sheets just provide some history on the gasoline and diesel accounts going back six years. I'm sure some of you remember that it was the Budget Committee who encouraged the town to look closer at these line items. Since that request, we have begun to track gallons used in average cost per gallon. This information is then used to produce the amounts used in the next year's budget. At the time of this report, I have updated the gallons used to reflect the amounts through 1130 of 17. Therefore, I have, I have only had to project out uh, one month, which would should account for pretty accurate usage predictions. If, if it is the committee's desire, I can develop a spreadsheet with this information along with the average price per gallon. After this task is complete, I would ask that the committee make motions to adjust the appropriate budget lines to reflect that. When the budget was created, it was June or July, I think, was the most accurate numbers that I had to use to um, project out for the year. And then I did it again, I believe, in with August numbers for the Board of Selectmen. So things change along the way. So I think um, at this point we're, like I said, only one month shy of what we actually used for this year. Uh, if you turn to the first um, Excel spreadsheet here, it basically shows you a summary. These are all the different types of gasoline and diesel across the top. 
and it shows you the gallons. These are actual gallons used in the first column of each one, the average price that we were paying um, in each of the departments. And then I projected out using, we only, um, through these numbers are through November. So like I said, it just projects out the one month thing. Excuse me. Yes. Just unleaded one, unleaded two, unleaded three. Those are different type gases. Yeah. And uh, I believe it's like regular unleaded, okay. premium, and super, oh, I believe. Okay, but okay. I just write, this is exactly how our WEX bill uh, Thank you. reads. So every, most of the uh, departments use the... Um, what was the name? Regular. Speedway? Is it Speedway, yeah, Speedway right up there? Speedway, or yeah. Where Hess used to be? That's the gas wow. station. So. Thank you. Um, and then I show you in the second little section there, I show you what the 2017 budget lines are read. And then I'm showing you what the 2018 proposed budget lines in front of you are reading. And I made a note here that when I was doing this exercise today and going through yesterday and today and looking at some of the numbers, I found that in um, the fire department, I believe that someone had asked the question why the gallons in the um, budget were, in the proposed budget were so high. And I found that what was in the actual budget was total gallons for that department. However, some of them should be moved to fund 27 because of the fact that it's for like the ambulance and stuff. So I'm gonna come up with an adjustment on that so that the gallons in the budget that you had received will be closer to what's in line with what is on these sheets. They won't match up right now if you look at them. Um, in the police department, the total gallons was okay, but it needs to be split because some of it, like 400 and something, should be towards the motorcycles that they use and that they have to use the um, E3 unleaded, which I think is like super. And then also the same thing happened in the recreation. They have a, a, not a special revenue, they have a revolving fund in recreation. So the bus gasoline should be coming out of there. So we need to move that from the budget. Uh, so we'll be able to reduce those numbers. Then the next sheet here just shows uh, the actual spending through um, the October financials, which are actually the bills that have been paid through September uh, gasoline shows you there and then I also give you a little summary of the average prices that we were paying and then um, some research that we've done just trying to project if we should use the average price or if we would need to inflate it and I think Fred and I agree we're pretty um, comfortable with using what we are finding to be the average cost per gallon I think that's what we did in the budget last year too and and we seem to be running okay um, at that time it was a dollar seventy five and that's what we put into the budget for 17. So this year it looks like about, I think we had $1.84 in there, and that looks to be pretty close to um, what you're seeing on this sheet for my average for the unleaded. And then the last two sheets here are basically just giving you histories of actuals and averages and stuff, and you guys can see it's just basically showing you that the gasoline and the diesel line items in the budget have dropped considerably over time, and I'm pretty confident now that with the tracking that we're doing that um, we're getting as accurate as we possibly can with the gasoline and diesel numbers that are being put into the budget. Those numbers, are they gallons or is that money? These are money on the last two pages, sorry. Money. Yep, those are dollars. Yep, sorry, I should have put dollar signs in there. But yeah, those are showing you what we actually spent in each of those years. <clears throat> and then um, what is requested in the admin budget uh, for 2018. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Any questions? Uh, Tim Jones? Thank you. Um, thank you, Christy, for the wonderful detail. Appreciate it. i uh, just got a couple questions in reading the spreadsheet, so I'm reading it accurately. Uh, <coughs> on the various departments, we have custom vehicle slash asset ID. It looks like a license plate number. Is that, yes. is that what that is? License plate number? And is that been a line is that for every transaction so every transaction is actually detailed here yeah. and there's more detail too we just I mean the Excel spreadsheet would be this big if we left all the detail that is provided to us uh -huh. so we just kind of I wouldn't it have down. a problem with that now well you, you present you I got a, I got a little thing on my screen it's a scroll bar yeah, yeah. 
She actually sent him. I don't know if you saw no, the email. No, he's talking about sending me, but I'm just saying we can even have more details. I got if it you right wanted. in front of me here. <coughs> oh, okay. There's additional details, is all I'm saying. When you get download the documents from Wex, I just pull out what I feel right. is important, which is the. Uh, well, the reason I ask is because I see all these. They look like transactions, but I don't see a vendor here, for example. Oh. Uh, and so obviously there was more information. Now you told me you cut it off because it was just considered superfluous, basically. Right. Okay. Um, I'm curious now. We got a WAX, a WEX card, W E X. W E X. Yeah. Card. Yeah. Well, we don't have one. We have many. Right? Yes. Okay. Multiple cards. Mm -hmm. Every vehicle has a card. Does the card go in the vehicle? Yes. So whoever's driving the vehicle can then use the card. And that's for that vehicle, yes. Right. Okay. And it just stays in that vehicle all the time. I. That's our understanding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the finance director, so well, the that I, is the plan. Every vehicle has a card that matches up to it, and there is card numbers also. That's another column. Right, but <laughs> that's just a, you know a, a, an assumption. Would you like me to yield to you, David? When you're done, please. Uh, <laughs> just a quick question, Christy. Um, 2013. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 David. Are you I'm yielding. yielding. I'm yielding. You're yielding. David. Okay. I did. Yeah, I'm yielding to your quick question. Go ahead. Thank you. Are you on the summary page, or are you on the pages? I'm on the page the with the dollar signs. Yep. Okay, and if it is dollar signs, yes. if I look under fire department, diesel. Uh -huh. Yes. 2012, I paid $16,000. 2014, it was. My guess is that's probably a typo. I'd have 14, to go back and look. but 2013 is 129000 That seems a little. That's probably Weird. a typo. I have to plug all these things in. So my guess is that would be a typo. I'd have to go look, though. Thank you. Tim? Yeah, the reason why I'm curious about, you know, how the the uh, workflow goes with this is because the DPW director came in here, and in response to David's other quick question that night, uh, he said something to the effect of he's using 6,000 more gallons than... He was. He doesn't know why, because he's using less vehicles, and he has less people to drive them. So I'm like, well, how can that be? I don't get it. I don't know how he came up with he was using 6,000 more yeah. gallons. Now, so. you went through the detailed view of it. Right. And do you perceive that the DPW director was mistaken with that 6,000-gallon figure? I would have to, let's see, if you look at the 17 gallons for a DPW, um, for unleaded, he had 11,281. And for 18, we're projecting now 14,000. So it's only about a 3,000 gallon difference there. And then about another three for diesel. So. And so the statement is generally accurate then. 6,000. Yeah, it's about 6,000 between the two of them, yes. So he's using 6,000 gallons more of, of fuel on vehicles in which he has a, a, a smaller number of vehicles and less people to drive those vehicles. Sounds all right. It does, and that's, what, that's why I call for the separate detailed discussion at that time. Uh, can you speak to that, Fred or Christy? Well, I think you're going to find it, because a number of the vehicles we have have some age on them, yeah. and they're not very efficient to run. Um, and they run eight hours a day, period, just like the police department yeah. does. But the, the larger trucks burn considerably more fuel, particularly the trash trucks, because of the reburners, which is a problem. Uh, so the, the, their consumption of fuel has been going steadily up because of those problems. Do we, so have, do we have accounting controls in place to identify these uh, fuel hogs? As yeah, we know who they are, and, and or they're in fact, we're spending anywhere from a third to a half of our maintenance budget on those fuel hogs. We're looking to get rid of them. Right, so I guess maybe getting rid of them with newer vehicles would lower this uh, fuel cost? With, 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 well, with new vehicles who don't have active earners, and I'm looking at Mike over here because he knows what I'm talking about. Well, you're talking about those old-fashioned yes. afterburners yeah, as right. opposed to the new-fashioned afterburners. Yeah, well, the new-fashioned <laughs> afterburners are, are okay. They, they, don't, they don't plug up the system and cause you to have breakdowns and have to have the system rebuilt, and that's uh -huh. what we're doing. Right. And that's very expensive. So those are the gas hogs that are in your mind, at least? They're, they're, as far as I'm concerned, those are the gas hogs, yeah. Okay, okay. Fuel. 
So they're, they're actually burning 6,000 gallons, well, 3,000, they burned diesel, so diesel. it was a 3,000 gallon on the diesel side. It was side. about three on each, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so that 3,000 uh, diesel, just for DBW increase, is attributed to the garbage trucks being uh, more piggish than they were last year? I, I think that's where our problem is the diesel area. Right and yeah. I would also point out that when you were looking at these numbers, this is actually what was budgeted in 2017. Right. I could go back and look what the actuals were because it, there's nowhere in this document that you are looking at that shows you the 2017 right. actuals. Actual. The 2018, I'm showing you actual gallons. Right. The 2017 what was just what was budgeted. So if we went back to the end of 2017, ran these same reports, we would be able to tell you if that, what did I have here? I had uh, 11,281 gallons. We would be able to tell you if that was actually what, what ended up being used because it's possible it wasn't. You have to realize that this is all just, right. you know. So would you would you think that would be a fr fruitful exercise to do? If you would like me to do it, I can it do it. It sounds like yes. it might be a fruitful exercise. What do you think, Fred? Oh yeah, I mean, any any statistics that we can run out, we are having problems with some of these vehicles. That's why we want to get rid of them. We have deadlined. Uh, we have two sludge trucks. We've deadlined one. We're getting rid of it. It's an auto car. It's reached its life expectancy. It's it needs extensive repairs at this point. We're just not going to put the money into it because it isn't right. worth it. So, you have another quick question. You want me to yield? Wait, wait, please. wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'll continue. Instead of yielding. Finish, I'll continue. finish, Tim, okay. and when you're done, then David, I'll recognize you. Okay, that's the way we're going to do well, it. I'm concerned. Right, he please. says you leave the Rex card in each individual vehicle. Or at least that's the way it's supposed to be. But there's no assurance that that's the way it's actually happening. Well, I'm not in those departments. So I said I wouldn't speak to that. Right. I didn't so say I'm it wasn't asking, happening. So I'm asking yeah. Fred to. I'm not going to look at Fred. <laughs> He's well, the big guy. If, if the implication would be that someone was using it for their own personal vehicles. Possibly. Uh, well, we had an individual that we did catch doing that, not with the cars, but they were using uh, some of the gas that we store at the Public Works Department and, and, and skid steer. Uh, and, and we caught them doing it. They've been terminated. They were forced to pay back the money, and we, we brought charges against them. So we're very stiff about that. Yeah. We do check these bills very carefully. Hold on. Do, you, do you maintain logs when, 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 there's, when there's a transaction? When the vehicle pulls in the gas station, writes his miles down. I mean, and they have a log. They're supposed to inventory what they're doing. Okay, we capturing that log. I think Public Works is. I don't know about all the other departments because that would be probably the only way of putting a manager control on that kind of thing. Wouldn't well, it? then you you can obviously dummy the control. You can't dummy the dominant so easily though. Well, yeah, you can because if you're running the vehicle all the time, you can dummy it any time you want. Yeah. Well. Okay, uh, I'm just concerned about a little bit of, you know. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's anyone who's who's cheating the I'd system. I'd like to believe currently. that's true, but uh, if we catch them, they won't yeah, be unemployed. Yeah. Like he long. said we caught someone and they're no longer working. So yeah, yeah. Okay. We just. So I look forward to your your secondary analysis, which yeah. we think might be fruitful, and also your your MMO is saying a lot of us. You're coming to uh, the budget committee with adjustments, uh, subsequently, uh, on the various. If you guys are willing to make the adjustments, yeah, I would be happy to do the work to get the um, adjustments yes. ready. Let's, yeah. let's, let's get me more So you would like 2017 in the year, yeah. gallons If you think that used. would be fruitful, then I want to have it, and it will back up whatever recommendation you're going to make, which I'm sure this budget committee will endorse, just as we did last year, with yeah. the exception of increasing the cemetery gas budget, which we did. Uh, <laughs> How did that turn out? Did they burn as much as uh, they did not? Okay, so not we're going to so be far, looking forward to talking to about numbers. that at a, at a relevant time later on. It could be Thank a dead you. subject. I don't know. <laughs> I, I kind of got that in mention <laughs> a couple of months ago. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, David. Fred, uh, sir. Side question. You said that we've used the 6,000 gallons and because of the trucks are all, which I'm with you 100%. Yeah, just My question terrible. is. If that engine becomes that inefficient, and I have a lot of breathing problems, believe me. So I get behind one of these trucks, and I see all the black smoke coming out of it. In this case, it'd be white Where smoke. Where are the state yeah. police getting on? My question is, in that context, if they're burning that much, are we breaking environmental laws or something of that nature? If They, they must well, be pretty that's dirty. A, that's a good question. I can tell you that uh, if you... The problem with reburners is that you need to take them out on the highway and run them at highway speeds for for a substantial period of time, and they work fine. 
the temperature. Right. It's the temperature that, that, that you've got to get, the ambient temperature in the system's got to get up. And you don't do that going from I'm tin can to tin can to tin can. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't work very well. So what happens is that uh, when they they fill the truck and they, they do a regular route back to, to, to empty the truck, and that, that system is impacted, what you will see is gigantic clouds of white smoke everywhere. Yeah. And that's when the truck is going to break down. Because we have to put it in for repairs at that point. And they've got to tear that system apart and rebuild it. So it's a poor system. It was something the federal government dictated uh, a number of years ago. We ended up with those trucks because they were the ones on the market when we bought. Uh, we would li now like to gradually get rid of those and, and get rid of this problem so that we don't have these gas hogs running around like crazy, which is what they're doing. They run eight, ten hours a day. Well, they must go in for an annual inspection from the state, right? Just like a car? Well, yeah, we inspect them ourselves because we have our own inspection station. And, and so, uh, we're required to report all those things. We're required to do all the tests that everybody else is. Uh, and that's why it's costing us a lot of money because we're actually doing them and we're actually fixing them. Thank you. Okay. Um, Steve Henderson, you had a question? It's a quick one, uh, Tim Nancy. Yours on the WEX cards. Normally, most of the uh, units all have one assigned to each unit, okay? Yeah. So if it's whatever it is, you know, and they all have one assigned. And normally, after you swipe the, the uh, WEX card, then they also would ask for an officer identification yeah. number. Right. So they we put in our that. own personal code. So that's assigned to me. So I go up there, swipe it. I put in my code number. The next thing they'll ask for is mileage. And then, you know, we can stop pumping gas. So Wex is capturing so all of that? So oh, really, yeah. it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a full safe thing, because I'm putting my code number in. So when I'm pumping, if I pump in 300 <coughs> gallons into a, you know, and it's a cruiser that takes 20 gallons, yeah. it's, 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 you know, you're not going to get away with it. So for the most part, it's, it's very each difficult. one is assigned it. So for somebody to, you know, go out there and go outside the box and, and do something like yeah. that, you really got to. So really, that's on the full spreadsheet, basically, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. you can't, it's very difficult to gain the system. You, you're going to have to have some way to get in with some sort of a security key right. And, and, right. and play games with the computer. Short think, of that, you're not going to be able to do thank it. Thank you very much. I think that um, that, that does answers the accountability yeah. question, um, and I'm, I'm sure that that's something that the department heads are constantly uh, monitoring. So, any other questions on uh, any other questions for Christy regarding the gasoline or diesel accounts? Seeing none, thank you very much, Christy, for thank all you. of this work so far, and and to do the suggestions that um, that we had talked about. Right. Okay. Right. And now it's now we have fun with funds. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to funds. Yes, we are. Okay. I clarify today that I was talking about fund, not funds earlier, right? That's right. We're going to have fun with funds now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We'd rather drop the D and have some good signs. Okay. Is this my one? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, go ahead, Christy, please. Okay, so I started out by providing a spreadsheet that I had found on um, in our network that Mike had used, I believe, and provided to you guys at some point back in his tenure mm -hmm. um, with the town. So I kind of updated that as a starting point um, to get us going. And so I basically listed out the different funds who has, well, like I said, Mike had done this, who has custodian of them. Uh, I gave the balances as of 12, 31, 16. Those are all from the audit. And then I gave balances uh, as of 10, 31, 17 and provided some additional notes <coughs> on each of the funds. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I believe that I have been asked specifically to speak on the private detail, the cable, and the ambulance fund. So after your first sheet there showing you all the funds, I have another attachment there basically giving you the history of the Hampton cable TV Local Origination Fund, the Hampton Emergency Medical Services Fund, and the Hampton Detail Fund. I showed you when they were established as special revenue funds, the Warren Articles that they were established under, and then um, when they evolved or became revolving funds. So they went from special revenue to revolving funds. Uh, all the years are there with the article numbers and then attached to that are the two RSAs, one that has to do with the special revenue and one dealing with the revolving fund. After that, I gave you a little more history on those three funds. 
letting you know their balances going all the way back to 2000, because that's when they were all established as revolving, or as special revenue funds, I'm sorry, <coughs> not revolving, as special revenue funds. And then I gave you um, my memo as a whole on each of those funds, and then I went a little bit further and gave you a separated onto each fund with the backup of the Warren articles, plus the cable origination fund has some details that are in the code book for the town, so I provided that with each of the funds. So we can go through however you guys choose. I just was trying to give you the overview, and then maybe you guys can give me some guidance on where you would like me to go. If you want me to read about all of them, I can, or well, whatever yeah. you'd like. Let me, um, let, me <clears throat> let me see what Tim Jones has to say. Okay. Well, I just have some very general questions. I don't think we need to have it all read to us. Okay, Tim. Um, if you have, you want to answer, uh, ask some questions, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, are these fund balances are they accurate? Because I hope so. The cable key. <laughs> You've got a label. Honesty. <laughs> 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 you tell your kids all the time, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I hope they would be too. So, so we're we're sharing that. But. The fund name cable committee, which should be cable TV fund. Yeah, that's not correct. There's no, a typo there. You can blame Mike Schwarzer for that, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> the but cable that, fund balance. But that fund balance as of Halloween it, is only. It's not, that's not right. That's no. not right. That's no. Why, that's why I asked the question. Yep. That is incorrect. So can we, can we re, uh, not right this minute, but can we uh, I have the update that? You. Oh, yeah. you do? Okay. Okay, so instead of it being what I'm reading, 39,000. Yeah, it's not 39,000. That's my. Okay. That's my not going back and doing yeah. corrections. Yeah, uh, it is $392,271.69. Wow. Quite a difference. $392,271.69. Thank you. Tim? Now, can we speak about these other ones? Like, please detail. Is that an accurate number? Can we detail? Yeah. We currently have. I will um, look at the end of October. I have all the October financials here. So, for these um, four funds down there that I report on, we can look at them real quick here. Let's see. The rec the recreation has one hundred fifty three thousand seven hundred eighty three dollars and thirty seven cents. Mm -hmm. The cable one we just corrected. The private detail has $146,351.85, so it just rounded, rounded up there. Up, I got it, yeah. And then the ambulance fund has $619,502.36. And the last one so that she... rounded it down. <laughs> well, because it's 36, so it's under five. I understand. Just teasing. <laughs> and then... Um, the wastewater system development charge, I don't know if that one got added. Yes, that's up on the top here. It has $191,755.98, so round up. Okay, I would I would suggest that, you know, all of these numbers are accurate with the exception of the correction we made on yes. the properly named cable TV fund. Yes, it's missing the two. It was missing the two. Missing the two. Yep, it was three hundred ninety-two thousand. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah, we right. only had thirty-nine thousand there. So. Yes, I. Oh, I see. You slipped the, the digit. Yeah. Right. Okay, got it. Didn't notice that. I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, it's okay with you that we just uh, take uh, the uh, cable TV fund first and the EMS and go the right detail ahead. fund go together, ahead, Tim. Let's and do then the, get out of here. Let's do the cable TV fund first, please. Okay. We've got too much money in this fund. Everyone knows that. Everyone agrees with that, right? No. No. They don't. Let me read to the committee okay. from what I have done for my research, okay? okay? It says, the cable television itself has a long history, which can be found in Chapter 69 of the Town of Hampton Code of Ordinances, dating back to 1980. In March of 2000 is when the Special Revenue Fund was created. In March of 2013, the Special Revenue Fund then became a revolving fund and 25% of franchise fees were to be placed in the fund. Lastly, in 2016, the percentage of franchise fees to be placed in the fund was increased to 100%. The majority of the money that goes into this fund is used to pay salaries of part-time employees who record events such as meetings, sporting events, etc. Equipment needed to run the station and a portion is requested by SAU 90 to cover costs for media, 
coordinator and equipment cost. I have spoken with Brian McCain, the chairman of the cable committee, and have been informed that there is a plan in place to expend the funds in this account. The first goal is to hire a part-time control room technician, followed by studio upgrades and live streaming. The studio upgrade and live streaming is expected to, is expected to be around 167000 The committee is also expecting to see a request from SAU 90 for a cost related to the new studio that will be part of the academy building project. This is expected to be in the $80,000 range. So there with the 167 and the 80, you're almost out to the fund balance. Not even close to that. That's 240, and the fund balance is essentially 400,000. Right, but there's a part-time employee that they're looking to hire at 20 hours a week at $20 an hour, I believe, with benefit, not benefits, but uh, mm. Social Security and Medicare and all of that. But a lot of what you just spoke to are like one-time expenses, right? Yes. And yet, to get a studio, I would assume that's a one-time expense. Exactly. We're not going to build a studio every year, are we? No. Yeah. Not. I'm not on the cable committee. Well, I would assume that that would be absurd to build a studio every year. Yes, okay. that would be absurd. Uh, but yet we're pulling in, how much money did we pull in this year? Like, just three hundred. dollars Last year, right? the balance in the fund uh, was $181,337 at the end of 16. So, so we pulled in 210 as of Halloween. Yeah. yeah. As of Halloween, we pulled in 200. Right, well, we get quarterly checks from them. So that that October number may have the last quarter in it. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if it's ahead or in the rears. No, pay I'm that. pretty sure that that has the last quarter in it. I think so, too. Yeah. But I'd have to look and see. We get four payments a year from Comcast. So we've got three this year. Well, no, we may have four in there, I'm thinking. I'd have to go look and see. Because we're, we're in the fourth quarter when you do October financials. Yeah, you know, Tim, hold on just a minute. I just want to clarify something here, okay? Christy, you said that as of uh, 2016, you used the number 181,337? Yes. I believe. And I just want to ask a quick question. I don't mean to interrupt you, Tim, but uh, so that was the total brought in in 2016. No, that was the fund balance. In oh, the fund balance. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, okay. Tim that's since, okay. Your that last check for the cash was like $70,000, 70, right? I don't recall off the top of my head. I look at a lot of I remember numbers. Yeah. No, it was more than Huh? It was more than that. It was more than that. So you multiply that times four. Closer to 100,000. Right. So I multiply that times four. You do it quarterly. That's 400,000 a year. Or four times 75 is still... Uh, it, it depends on the number of prescribers and, right. and what, what they're pres uh, prescribing to you. Know, right. But three to 400,000 a year is pretty... Sounds pretty accurate. In 2016, yeah. we took in $286,715.51 mm -hmm. for franchise fees, and that was when it was still at, in 16, right. it was hadn't been increased or it had. Oh, no, it's got, year, it, yeah. yeah. And then so. 2017, to date, of these financials, we had taken in a total of $272,040.08. So we're... Just backtrack a bit here. For it. For a time, we were only dedicating a portion of the revenue stream from the so-called franchise fee to the cable TV fund. Yes. And as of last year, we changed that to 100 percent. Yes. Which I 100 percent supported because we're charging people this fee for our local key cable TV, and all of it is, in my mind, should be going there. Otherwise, it's the sales tax rather than a user fee. But the truth is, is that that's too much money. It's more than is necessary to run the cable TV operation. But it's also true that because we were playing uh, um, kind of tight with the cable TV expenditures over the years, they're a little bit behind the time technologically wise, and so they do need an upgrade. So there does need a period, a period of time, like this year, where we actually build up the fund so we can refresh everything technologically and get to a good baseline and then establish that what our actual annual costs are plus depreciation for the equipment so that we can then estimate how much money we actually need cable TV or Comcast to charge their customers the proper fee rather than what I would call an exorbitant fee, which is what they're paying now and have been paying for years. Because it's far more than what was necessary to run the <coughs> operation. 
Now, I understand this is generally considered to be a true statement, even at the Board of Selectmen, that they need to address with Comcast the um, franchise fee uh, charge. And how we go about establishing what that right number is is still kind of up in the air, but it seems on a general level you need to get to a baseline, establish your annual cost going forward, including appreciation, and then get an estimate because it's basically a percentage, like a sales tax, on what their cable, their basic cable only, Fred? Is it just basic cable? Yes, it's just basic cable. Right. But right now, no, it's cable. C cable period. Cable period, but okay. it's not their online services or things of that right. nature. Right. So just any any TV element of a cable right. TV just package. Just the TV, TV packages, yeah. And, and what is it, 3 or 4 percent now? I think it's 4. 4 percent. So we're charging a 4 percent uh, <clears throat> tax or user fee is what it's supposed to be. Right. Um, and it's, it's more than is necessary. So we're, we're causing people who are Comcast TV subscribers, which I am not, so it's not going to affect my pocket at all. I cut the cape, I cut the cord some time ago. It's sort of new, Mr. Chairman. Right? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be you know charging people uh, uh, in excess. And, and so, I'm hoping that by having this conversation, that it brings the bear that the board of selectmen, um, when they endorse going to 100 percent, recognize it was too much money and that needed to be addressed, and it does need to be addressed. I haven't seen a whole lot of conversation going on or action going on in that area, and I would like to encourage that uh, to uh, kind of uh, get a boost start again. And for that, I'll just shut up. And let, unless you want to comment on what I just said, Fred. No? Okay. okay. I, I just, to, just to summarize a little bit of what Tim said, because I think you have a pretty good idea of the big picture that, that Tim is drawing, and I think we all in this room know what he's talking about. Um, but it, it, at this point, there is a lot of equipment that needs to be changed out in that room, new digital equipment, a lot of stuff switches. Um, and once we get to that point, and once, as Tim pointed out, we get a better idea of what is going to work. How much does the, you know, but the cable committee need every year, come up with a budget, then we can focus on that number and zero in a little bit more. Right now, we don't really know that. That's just a bit of a summary of what Tim just said. Right, Christy. and the, that's exactly what Mr. McCain has, Brian McCain and I have had discussions on this. I mean, I only put so much into the details because I didn't know how far we wanted to get into the topic here, but that's exactly what they're hoping to do, that yes, the fund does have a large balance right now. Maybe it exceeds the amounts that I was just throwing out that needed to be used, but that's their goal, is to update the studio have the money available if the school does need it, because we do um, provide money to the schools, as we should, um, for their local TV channel. And then after that, they plan to do exactly what you had mentioned, you know, get a budget, figure out what they need, and then at least then everyone in the community will know what is needed, and then it'll be up to the voters or whoever, the Board of Selectmen, whoever it is, to decide how we go about Well, it's really up money. to the Selectmen to... Uh to negotiate a contract fee with Comcast, and then Comcast should be happy to say, hey, we're going to reduce the, the, the total mm -hmm. cost to our customer by reducing this fee. I don't think there's going to be a fight with them over that. might be some bureaucratic hassle, but beyond that, I'm sure they'd be happy to do it. But it's the Board of Selectmen that need to reach out and do that. And they will. Too. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to revert back to what we did years ago. We're going to say, oh, there's too much money in the fund. Let's take money out of the fund and use it to reduce the tax rate which effectively turns it back into a sales tax. And that's, Tim, that I think everybody has understands that point. Right well, now, I just need to emphasize it, because I, I have to. You have emphasized it, and I understand it. I think everybody is going to be happy with the result. It's not going to happen tonight or even Agreed. this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but we're all on the same page with that. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, Sonny, you had something yeah, you wanted to mention? Uh, Channel 13, up and running in the school's budget, have you compared what their operating costs are? One thing I've always done is look at the town of Exeter for, to see what they spend for services. You know what I mean? This fund is operated by the cable committee, not by the finance right. director, so you would have to ask that question set, of them. They've set up a studio and they're operating. Who set up a studio? Hmm? Who set up the studio? You don't have a studio? We do not have a studio. No. 
So. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's going to be at the uh, new academy. Okay, does that answer your question, Sonny? No, more or less. Thank you very much. Any other questions about this no. cable? All right, continuing on. Yeah, EMS fund. If I'm EMS, going. absolutely. Let's go right uh, to it. EMS fund is very exciting fund. And that There's would be fund. fund 27, I believe? Yes. Sounds good to me, but okay. I like the name rather than numbers. All right. EMS fund. <laughs> um, and, and exactly like the <coughs> private detail fund, not exactly like it. It's no, very there different. There are some kind of exact things about it. Uh, uh, perhaps Mike Schwartz's spreadsheet calls it his detail. It's actually a private detail fund or something like that, right? So that needs a correction as well. But uh, that minor point. They were both uh, funds that were created in 2002 and then destroyed in 2006 in favor of revolving funds, right? 2006, they became an evolving funds, yeah. Right, right. Now, I didn't look in detail on EMS, but I did look in de more detail on the police detail. So I'm speaking these together now, okay? Um, and again, Mike Schwartz's spreadsheet, I suspect, is wrong because it says expenditures are approved by chief or deputy chief. But the one article actually says the town manager alone decides. So it's not the deputy. He may seek approval from them, which would be logical for him to do, but it's entirely the town manager's call. I assume that's also true with the EMS fund. Is that right, Fred? The EMS fund set up slightly differently. So you don't make the call on the expenditure? Well, there? I have to approve the call. Yeah. Okay, but ba basically that pays the expenses of running the ambulance. Right, right. That's bottom line. We don't take anything else out of that except new ambulances. See, before, in 2000, when the funds were created, uh, expenditures had to be taken out for your town meeting vote for your several warrant Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. And so they were converted in 2006 after 2004 and 2005 warrant articles to take money out failed. And the town manager at the time, not you, Fred, but the other guy, Mr. Barrington, Barrington uh, created, destroyed the funds and created the revolving funds and gave the town manager exclusive authority for withdrawing from it without going to any... Actually, town meeting did that. Well, Barrington wrote it. Let's get real. <laughs> Fund 27 does read in that article that I attached. It does say town manager approval. Yeah. Right. That's for EMS, too, right? right. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, that, and it actually was, if you look at the deliberate session minutes from 2006, it's actually explained by the moderator at the time, I believe his name was Walker, uh, who said that the private detail fund is going to function exactly like the EMS fund. Except EMS was for EMS and private de police private detail police private detail related. So I got that correct, right? Basically. We're all on the same page factually, right? Okay. Now, the actual use of the EMS fund is it pays for everything related to the ambulance, right? Everything. Okay. So people who operate the ambulance, they're employees, and they get paid, but they get paid out of this fund, right? Is that true? The EMS officer gets paid directly out of this fund. Right. Any overtime callbacks get paid out of this fund. Right. And then all of their incentives, if they have the incentive to be the paramedic or whatever their percentage incentives, we do a journal entry. That's paid out of the fund. Yeah. Those are paid, fund. Yeah. Yeah. Those right. are, um, paid out of the fund. It's like 80 or 90000 a year. Yeah. So everything related to EMS is paid out of this fund. Right. Especially in the employees in particular, what's on my mind at the moment. The fund you're going to buy an ambulance for what three hundred and two hundred forty thousand something like that. That's coming out of this fund as well, I assume. Yeah, and we we approved it yesterday. Right, right. And so I like the EMS fund the way in terms of the way it's operating because it's all very clean cut. We have a very discreet function, which gets paid out of a single fund. There's no overlap the budget with it at all. So I mean, these people like the EMS operator, for example. He gets benefits. Is, is, does, he, does, does that get does his benefits? Including his benefits? retirement and stuff does. Yes. So that gets taken out of the fund also. Right. Under the payroll benefits. Yes. Yeah. My concern is is that on the police private detail fund, this is not the way it, it has been operated. Uh, I, I, I've looked and, and, and asked around, and I haven't been able to find, any, just as an example, any any way of any history of the pension contribution for the police detail. Because they earn police uh, pension rights when they're on detail, right? 
Right, and there's a journal entry every month that moves it to the fund. So it actually takes it out of the fund and puts it into um, personnel administration? How does no, that work? No, no, no. There's the a mechanics? journal entry every month that takes it from the personnel administration and moves it to the fund. Right, but essentially it's being paid for through the budget. That pension. When it actually comes out of the payroll system, yes, but when every month I do a journal entry and I move the retire, you're talking about retirement, um, you know, those yeah, we, items. We charge right? for the police private details based on a formula, right, which is being changed, I believe, right now. Right? But the formula consists of such things as uh, the cost of the officer's uh, wages, including benefits, some percentages of automobile de depreciation, right? Equipment depreciation in general, right? Did I get all that right, Fred? We don't charge for depreciation. Yeah, there's no charge for depreciation. You charge for mileage. It's called a sinking fund, and that's illegal in New Hampshire. Okay. So you don't charge, charge for, for the all. cruiser. Is that what you're speaking of? Yeah. We charge for use of the cruiser, use but not the depreciation. Cruiser, not depreciation. Okay. The use of the vehicle. Right. Like $14 uh, an hour or something. Right. Or something. Yeah. And so we see manifest uh, in this year's budget the... Uh, the contribution from the fund into the acquisition of one of three police vehicles. Two. Two. Oh, in the 18 budget, maybe it is one, but for 17 it was two. Okay. But in 18, I don't, I don't so, know. So I see, I see the transfer from the fund into the budget to pay for the, the uh, police cruiser. Mm -hmm. But what I'm looking for is the transaction that takes it from the fund to pay for the policeman's pension. And the policeman's FICA. So well, you don't see that for um, the EMS one directly either. Right, right. Well, you, you see that. payroll benefits on there, but you're, I don't. I guess I don't know exactly what you're asking for. It's the same exact journal entry each month for both funds, okay. along with I move library and cemetery into their own sections on the budget too. Uh -huh. So it's a monthly journal entry that is done for retirement, and it's it's just called payroll benefits. I think on the monthly financials. I think if you look at fund 26, hold on. I do a journal entry, and I think it's literally just called payroll. I don't, want, I, don't want to, I don't want to bore the world with the accounting uh, behind it, but I am curious. New Hampshire Retirement, Social Security, and Medicare are all listed out on fund 26. And then on fund 27, for some reason, I didn't set these out, but for some reason on fund 27, it's all lumped together, I believe. Yeah, it's not being treated the same, and this is causing confusion, I guess. Oh, no, it is. It's listed out separately. Medicare and retirement. There's no um, Social Security because in everyone in fires full time that would be getting transferred to that fund. So it is the same in, in the financials. Is that information that's in my packet that you gave out today? No, it's in your monthly financials that you get every month. Okay. So I didn't, that, that I, didn't include, I don't believe that, that I did. The detail fund you stuff. just cited? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's listed. It's part of the detail. Under expenses. Right. Apparently I missed it now. I'll have to look more closer. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I have a journal entry that's set up, and I plug in the wages. Would you mind if I spoke with you offline and got a better understanding? Would that be okay with you, Fred? That's fine with me. Okay. Okay with you, Mr. Chairman? Fine. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll look, look, look for you, Christy, for in a subsequent time to get more, more better understanding in my... Rather slow okay. and just to just to clarify, okay, the fund twenty seven, and it make sure that I'm correct in saying this, when somebody goes for an ambulance ride, that's where the money's coming from. That's a, that's the revenue. Okay. The, the billing fund. Okay. Yeah, right. The billing. It doesn't it's not a hundred percent. You bill it, you get money from insurance companies, you right. there's a certain amount that right. doesn't never comes in. But and the same thing with the fund twenty six this is for the people at home as well to realize that this, the, the money is not commingled with the, <coughs> the money from uh, general fund, from taxes and stuff. This is in a separate account, and it's, it's taking care of its funding itself because the ambulance is almost like a company. You know, we bill out for the services. And the same thing with these um, police details, same thing. Uh, utility companies, etc., are paying into this. And Tim was, um, I think, wanted to make sure that, for instance, when a police officer is working a detail, working at a rate of overtime or whatever, the rate is that for that particular officer, if there's a cruiser involved, the FICER, the, the uh, pension, everything else, that's all being taken out of this fund and 
and Christy has said she, she makes a journal entry every month. It is done by a journal the money over, the right? Yeah. So I think that that's important for people to understand that. Thank you very much, Tim, for bringing it <coughs> up. Anybody else have anything about Fund 26 or Fund, Fund 27? I'm glad that we talked about this because it does clarify a lot of yeah. things and so that everybody understands what's going on. There's nothing, that, everything is transparent in this town. You just, you know, you ask the questions, you get the answers, and I think that's very important, and I want to thank you both very much. Um, any Anything else for them, for Christy or Fred tonight, for hey, anybody here? On, on the um, police details, what is the current cruiser uh, rate that's being charged? I thought it was 14, but let me, hold on, let me check uh, and see if I have something on here. I think I might have some extra backup here, let's see. I believe it was 20 at one point. Is it 20? I thought it was 1435, I, I remember, from my payroll day, so that's why I'm saying no, that. it's but higher than that. It's higher what than is, that? I, I think, think so. so. And what's the administrative number? Because it was always like 20%, but no, what is that? It was 30, now? and it just got moved to 50. So it's 50% right. is the administrative fee? Right. Yes. It's charged, and then the cruiser fee? Not the cruiser, true. let's see if any, there's a cruiser on this bill here. Let me check. Yeah. The cruiser's 14.35 an hour. 14.35 an hour. Per so hour. see what happens when the officer turns around, he goes out to a detail. They tack on 50% administrative fee to cover right. expenses, plus 14.35 an hour for the use of a cruiser when they take a cruiser. So yeah. that all goes into this fund, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When it's billed, it goes into yeah, the Yeah, it's a mass there. there as opposed to the general fund. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim, you had one more thing you wanted to yeah, add? Yeah, just a more general, unrelated to the question. When you make a disbursement, um, for whatever reason, you assign it to one of those subline items we see in our, our thing, right? Our, uh, budget the book. department's heads do, yes. And then I review all of them. Right. But, I mean, it goes through the system. You've got to have that number in there, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Before you can pay anything, the number has to be in there. Same right. with wages, right. Right. all the wage lines. Because I hear some people talk about, well, we'll just take it off the bottom line, but the bottom line doesn't have a number. Right. So Nothing. you can't do that, can you? I you think have to find people, a number for it. When people say they take it off the bottom line, it just means it's bottom line budgeting. So it, well, everything has a number, yes. I understand the Every single disbursement has a number. They still have to identify a number yes. for you to do it. Correct. It's charged to the right account. <coughs> Absolutely. Even if there's no if funds it's in that account. Exactly. That's our goal. That's so that you can see truth in spending. I wanted to be spending. clear on the mechanics there because that, that suggests a different me mechanism. Yeah, there's no line for the bottom line. There's right. no number. There's no se secret number. No secret, no, secret no secret number. No secret sauce. <laughs> no secret sauce. <laughs> Thank you, Fred, very much. Thank Thanks. you, Christy, very much for coming in tonight. I look forward and to talking to you. I do want to um, say that pe some people may think that this, the questions we're asking and the things that we're doing are are boring, perhaps. I find it fascinating. <laughs> and you guys, this is what you do all day long, but this is all good stuff. Sonny, yeah. before, uh, real I, quick. I had one comment. I wear the earphones because Channel 22 doesn't know how to amplify in the room. You know, and if, if somebody in the audience wants to see a proposal, they have to turn around because that's the screen they see. You know, a few simple cures would make life a lot simpler. Well, hopefully they'll do that in the new studio. Well, they get the new studio and they get the new equipment. Hopefully that'll be satisfying. Okay, thank you very These much. These are Danielle's papers from. Oh, Should okay. I give them to you? And then I see Bob's are still over here, so. Yeah, yeah leave them with, with Bob's, Bob's and I'll okay. make sure that they get them, okay? Yep. Okay, thank you both very much okay. and good, have thank a you. good night, okay? Those hips lock. I'll make you a copy and email it. Okay, email. Okay. Two. Next on the agenda, we have, <clears throat> let me see where the agenda was. <clears throat> okay, we are going to approve the minutes from November 21st. Um, if you'd please take a look at those minutes. And do we have, um, I'll ask for first of all a, a motion to move these minutes. Anybody make a motion for that? I make the motion. Okay, Brian makes the motion. Who seconds? Second. Second by Mike Bluff. Any changes on page one? Page two, page three, page four. Hang on. Uh, on page five, Barbara. Page under, four. Okay, page four, Tim. There's a box there that says motion Daniel Augustine to bring forward to the public hearing. Yes. There was no motion to bring forward to the public hearing. It was just a motion. Okay, strike <coughs> motion. Just, just a general statement there. We had a problem a couple of years ago 
when that kind of language got into our minutes, uh -huh. and we actually made a change prior to the public hearing. Yeah. Uh, as you recall, it caused some people to complain rather loudly okay. about us pulling surprise changes. So okay. we cannot have that language, Barbara, in there ever okay. on a motion. Because we we're just moving it forward. We're not moving it forward to any place. Okay. So it's the words that should come out, the words that should come out are... Move forward uh, to the public hearing. Okay. So just take out to bring forward. Didn't we just do that with the last set of minutes? I thought well, so. it was something different, actually. But okay, but it, it, it seems like it was the same wording to bring forward. Yeah. Okay. No, it had to. It had to do with some uh, discussion. Okay. Well, and in this case, on page four, okay. of page of uh, of the draft, uh, the motion by Danielle. Just take out the words to bring forward, please. Anything else on page four? Uh, excuse me. Yes. Um. You want to read it through? You, you take out, take out the word forward. To, take out the first three words to bring forward. That's all. Yep. To okay. bring forward to public hearing, that all goes away. To bring forward to the public hearing. Okay, that all goes away. So the motion okay. should say, Tim, start with the sum of X amount of money. Well, it, it's right at the top of that. Uh, as I recall, anyway, right. Yeah, number four, which is on page one, I guess. Bottom of page one. Um, motion for the FY 2018 Department of Public Works. Okay. Proposed budget in the amount of block. That's that's exactly the wording that should be in the box as well. Okay. All right, so just make that change, Barbara. Anything else on four? Page five. I want to point out on page five under uh, Village District, number eight, um, Mr. Ladd said designers and musicians were working on the Christmas float. Please change Xmas. That's, I don't want that in there. Barbara, make sure that that's changed. Yes, I got that. Uh, One minute. We're not going to use Xmas, not as long as I'm the chair of this board. What page? Page five. Can I go back to four? Yes, you can go back to four. Um, After? After Barbara acknowledges that she can see well, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So what are you calling the float? It's called the Christmas float. Christmas spelled out. Yes, not Xmas. Okay. Please. Thank you. Go ahead, Tim. Page four. Again. Yeah. Um, that last part in there, it, it, I was trying to call for sensitivity about how we use public TV. I don't think that was uh, that's reflective in that sentence, um, in the last sentence on page four. So I'm happy you just strike it out or, or, or word it in such a way that it captures that essence that I was saying about being sensitive about not using public television as a campaigning vehicle. I remember that conversation and I I said something to the okay. effect that it wasn't for so much campaigning, it was for informational or educational type of thing. Purpose. I still favor the more bare bones approach to minutes, so I'd be happy if that comment just, related to me is just removed. Okay, so remove those two lines that Mr. Jones called attention to, and okay. then just remove both lines, please. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. I agree with you on that, Tim. Simplicity is best. Um, anything else on page four? Page five, page six. Okay. Um, so, who moved this? There's one other thing, though, that's to the. Uh, we'll have them. I do. Right. Hold on. I second it. Okay, Tim. What? There's one other thing relative to the penalty. I got to find it, though. The penalty. Yeah. Let me see if I can't. Uh, Section is it in Tom? Uh, yeah, Tom. What section is it? Is it on the DPW? DPW. Um, and it's right, right after where I said something about sidewalks. I wish I edited this document. 
in the future you might want to highlight it or something when you're going through it at home. Yeah, I had it before that, so. Okay, the clock is ticking, Tim. Yeah, I'm under pressure. I hear I feel it. Page four. In response to Mr. Jones, Miss Hale said that when installed sidewalks will be made ADA compliant. Yeah, the next line after that. What's it say? Although contracts contained a thousand dollar a day fine for going past the deadline, when the town suspended yeah. word, the clause would not apply. What page is that on? It's on four. That's what I thought it was. I just, I'm on my it's the second here. paragraph from the top. Well, see, th th those two lines oh, read as one paragraph, as though they were one subject. How would you like it to read? Um, uh, those, it should be two paragraphs those are two, two separate, subjects those are two separate things so yeah. the, you need to put and a space at the end of that in response to Mr. Jones uh, sidewalks were made ADA compliant put a space Barbara so it, could, no. it makes a new Make it a paragraph, paragraph. Yeah. Okay. and then the, then the next one it says although contracts contained a $1,000 a day fine it wasn't contracts it was the Lafayette Road uh, reconstruction contract that contained a one hundred a uh, one thousand dollar day fine. Sewer contract. Whatever whatever you want to call that contract. Uh, it was okay. Lafayette Road, that's all I call it. Okay. Yeah. Um so, going past the deadline. And when the town suspended the contract, they suspended that clause as well. Well it, they actually that's suspended what I said. they suspended the work. Right. It says work, well, no. but it should say yeah. suspended the work because it's gonna start again in the spring. No, no. The selectman didn't suspend the work. The selectmen suspended the contract. Okay, well, it says word, so... so no, it shouldn't. It should and that's say, not what I said, either. Okay, then tell her exactly what it should say, because... Although the Lafayette Road contract contained a $1,000 a day fine for going past the deadline, when the selectmen suspended the contract, they also suspended that penalty clause. Right. Okay. Is that clear to you, Barbara? Jennifer agreed... And I said that, thank you, my constituent is now satisfied with his request of me to bring it up. Yeah, but that's not in there. We're not going to add that. Well, that's what I said. I know. So I'm saying We're it again. Put it. So do you have the gist of what he's talking about, Barbara? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else for any, from I anybody? I hope not. Okay. In that case, uh, we have a motion by, by uh, Brian, Brian. seconded by uh, Mike Plouffe. All those in favor of accepting these minutes? Everybody except all those not, a, not, and then a, a abs, abstaining is Ginny because she wasn't here. Yeah, I'm going to abstain and because I wasn't here. Steve Henderson also abstained because he wasn't here. Everyone else approved it. All right, next on Kenny. the yes, sir. On the minutes. Yes. Uh, we were also emailed the so-called final minutes of nine. November ninth. November ninth. Uh huh. And it contains still the watermark of drafts. I noticed that, Barbara. It, it still said draft on it. Did it? Yeah. Um, and I, I did. And, 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 the, and the problematic to bring forward to public hearing is still in the box there uh, as well uh, that we discussed earlier. All right. Could you um, go back, Barbara, and check that on the November 9th min minutes? Remove the the draft. It's, it's, the, it's the it's the title of the of the section is correct, the motion. But what you put in the box with the vote is uh, worded differently and includes that offenses to bring forward to public hearings. So. Hold on one minute. Let me find it. So we need to actually revisit the minutes. From uh, at a subsequent meeting or now it's up to you. I, don't, I just so wanted to highlight that that was there. Let's just get it done right now because it's. Too <coughs> okay. It's pretty quick. <coughs> so the watermark on, has to come off. The watermark comes off, and then in the boxes where it says to be brought forth, or bring forward to the public, bring hearing. forward, the just, yeah. just make the same change. All references to public hearing should not exist. Okay. So just go through and make those changes again, and then it'll it'll be a final, and you can send it to me again as a final, okay. and then I'll send it off to uh, to be posted properly. Okay. 
So, um, we're going to move right along now. <clears throat> it's getting late. And, Selectman's, um, do you have any anything to report at all? Um, I want to bring up one thing ahead, about the confidential memorandum. Oh, yes, that, uh, yes, if you would, please. Uh, sent. Where is that thing? Here it is. In the cover. I think that that is probably, I mean, I understand why it's confidential. I don't think that we should be discussing it until we discuss it next Thursday, but. But the point is that it's confidential is, and to, this, to the people on this right, board. Right, the attorney gave so, it only specifically to the budget committee. Okay, so please do not share this with anybody. We can't discuss it even We're not going to discuss it right Ever. now. Well, we're not discussing it. It was just given to Public. us to look at. Right. Okay. But so, it's the fact that it's confidential means we can't even discuss it in a meeting, that's in right. a public meeting. Okay, so keep, make sure you keep this thing. Uh, don't don't give a copy to well, Max. It, I think we will be. <laughs> what is that? The confidential is, means confidential. that only we individually are allowed to consume it. We're not, even, we're not allowed to talk about it even among ourselves unless we're in a non-public meeting. Otherwise, we'd be violating 91A, right, Jenny? Right, right. Absolutely right. And I never do that. Okay, everybody, on, on, everybody understands about that. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Regina? No, any questions? Yeah, we're still working away on the Warren articles. We're hoping next week will be the day. Mm -hmm. um, we'd really like to try to get either Wright Pearson one more time to talk a little bit more about the uh, whole wastewater treatment plant. I mean, we realize we put the 300-page report or whatever it is up on the website, but chances are that, you know, I know most of us probably have read the whole thing, but I don't think we can expect that. So I think we do need to do a little bit of more work on explaining what exactly the first steps to attacking this uh, wastewater treatment plant would be. Right. Maybe I uh, take some suggestions with what the school did as they were successful last year and getting the school passed. They did a lot of uh, media and, you know, school TV media, social media, and I think we should uh, work on doing that same thing. Yes, and I, I, I want to mention that um, I watched the Selectman's meeting last night, and first of all, the you have not openly actually discussed. You're still in the process of kind of writing that particular Warren article. So it isn't, um, because I, I noted that somebody was at your meeting last night discussing a Warren article that had been, put, <coughs> been officially put forth. So at this point, um, and I'm, I'm talking about that, sort of the uh, water treatment plan right. specifically. Um, so it's, it would be premature. We're not talking about that yet. We're not going to talk about it until we actually have the Warren article that is moved from the selectmen, moves through the the, um, the legal, and then is presented to us. That's when we'll start talking about it, okay? Anything else, Regina? Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, anything for us, um, Jenny? Please pick up your budget books. You mean people still haven't? Uh -huh. um, I would suggest you do. Oh, okay. Please. We, were, we were kind of expecting it to <coughs> altruistic and bring it. Absolutely not. No. The we've we've come to learn that. Yeah. You have to go <laughs> sign for it. Okay. I did want to ask about the sewer thing. Um, I think one of the problems it was brought up, I think, uh, last night's Selectman's meeting, the 13.8 versus 15. Right. Oh, yeah. That, that needs... That is something, again, Tim, that's, I don't think it's premature for us to talk about it because the Selectman haven't even decided what they're going to do. So. No, no. She, 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 she said she was looking for suggestions, and I was about to make a suggestion that the delta of those two really need to be, you know, explained. It's very important because that's oh, kind of that's kind of a sore point among a number of people Some that I've people, heard from right. anyway. And that's why. Yeah. But they're 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 addressing it. They're addressing it. So we're going to leave it up to the selectmen. So that was my suggestion, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Okay, thank you. That she requested. Okay. Bye. Thank you. If I could throw in our two cents for the school. Two cents is the reason why, well, one of the reasons why it was our publicity and our media, the other thing is we kept our Warren articles and other things down to a bare minimum for the project. So I think that's a good right. thing to think about when you're going through. I mean, I know there's a lot of needs, but maybe we have to forego some if you need the sewer article. Or if, if they want the $15 million, right. they need to justify the added expense. And Fred started to explain that last night at the selectmen's meeting. But again, we're in territory we shouldn't be in. Right. That's selectmen, you do your job. When it's when it's done, you bring it to us. But can I 
No, no, go Can ahead. Can I answer Jujin? Your, go ahead, please. Um, yeah, I agree with you, James. And the, like the articles you saw tonight, I mean, yes, we did take some, some of them are coming out of the unassigned fund balance, general fund balance, whatever it's called this year. But the reason we did that was because we're figuring this would, the town manager is trying to come up with a plan that we can actually level the tax rate for the, for, you know, for four, five, six years, right. whatever it turns out to be. Instead of, that was why we taught, we put less toward, we didn't do the million mm -hmm. like we have done in the past right. couple of years. Right. So exactly. we did the 650 to specifically offset the tax rate. And then, you know, we're doing a couple small things just to get some of these projects going. And it doesn't have to come out of the taxpayer's pocket. And I don't know whether it's going to be 13.8 or 15 million, but I'll tell you right now, we really need to start working, in my view, on getting more information out to the public. And we need to start doing that rapidly. Okay. So once it has been approved by the selectmen, mm -hmm. I hope that everyone will help us be able to do that. I hope so too. Thank we you. Thank you very much. With the tours at this point in time, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Oh yeah, absolutely. By we talked about that last week. Right. Well, okay. no, we did it on the phone, but we'll do it here. So we should call the DPW office and talk to the secretary, who will make all the arrangements. Yeah. If you want to go down there, call her up. Simple as that. <coughs> we don't need to make this all. You know, really. Just wanted everyone difficult. to be on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Next thing is the, um, the, I put update of the CIP if available. Is there? Have they met at all, Brian? Okay. No. Gonna, uh, I'm gonna go everybody's over. doing their budgets <coughs> and everything else. So, so it's a busy time. I understand. Okay. I've got other business here. I just want to mention that we're meeting again on Thursday night of this week. So. Um, it's, let's keep other business to a minimum. Does anybody have other business that we need to talk about tonight? We need to talk about tonight. Well, I have a happy Hanukkah wish and a motion to adjourn, and that's about it. Second. Thank you very much. So, uh, motion by Tim. Second. Seconded by Ginny. All those in favor? This meeting is adjourned at uh, 940... <laughs> 947. Yeah. Thank you very much, Channel 22.